What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn As Goku? Ascending to Godhood, Part 3. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. The sleep was one of the most refreshing ones she had in a long time. She felt like she was drifting in space as a feather, free and relaxed with no worries in the world. Opening her heavy eyelids, she really didn't want to wake up from her dreamland. But when she felt the heat on her back and a meaty arm around her waist, she couldn't go to sleep any longer. Putting her hand on one wrapped around her, she finally recalled the vivid memory of yesterday's events, and once again turned beet red. Inside of her, she felt fought and fulfilled with love. Realizing what it actually was, she slowly removed the hand that gave her a lot of comforts, and went to the restroom right next door. Looking at herself in the mirror, her long hair was disheveled and some of her makeup was smeared. She felt something damp in her nether region, so she looked down to see her wet panties. She saw the contents of said panties and was shocked. She grabbed some tissues and started wiping all of it away while thinking about last night. I can't believe we did it last night. Wait until Chichi hears about this. She was thinking to herself while looking in a mirror, sort of like a pep talk. She did notice that her skin got a little bit smoother and brighter than before. Closing her eyes to recollect herself, she could not contain the excitement she was holding. After so long, I finally have the perfect boyfriend. It was right in front of me the whole time. Balma yelped when she felt something wrap around her chest. Seeing her lover's hands and warmth from behind, she relaxed and looked up to face him. Morning sunshine, did I wake you up? Hum, Goku replied with a short acknowledgement before going in for the kiss. Bulma was pleasantly surprised by the attack from her front and followed suit. What she totally did not expect was the attack from below making her see some stars. For the past four days leading up to the tournament, they didn't separate from each other for long doing it like rabbits. From the restroom to the dining hall, they did the deed everywhere they could. Bomber at this point was so exhausted from the constant workout that she actually looked forward to the martial arts tournament happening any longer and she wouldn't have any support for her legs. On the day of the tourney, Bomber was putting the finishing touches on her makeup that was recently smeared before a doorbell rung alerting her. Goku, can you please get the door? Goku with his gear on ready to go went to the front door to see who it was. Seeing Chichi on the other side of the door, he opened it to give her a big welcome. Bulma, are you ready to go and see Goku? And Dash as shocked as Bulma was when she first saw Goku's adult form, stood there paralyzed. Goku again chuckled at the overreaction and stepped forward to hug her. Chichi, I missed you. Chichi hugged back, but while she was doing so, felt something leaking from her nose. Bringing her hand up to her face and touching the spot, she saw dark red liquid on her fingertips. Now she brought her whole hand and furiously wiped all the blood away before they could separate. Hey Goku, you got really tall. Did you just come by before the tournament like last time? Remembering that she went to visit her dad's newly built castle, he calmly responded like it was no big deal. I got her about a week ago. I heard you went to your dad's place so we barely missed each other. Stunned, then confusion, then anger were the emotions that phased through her face like a slideshow. Completely ignoring Goku, Chichi stormed past him into Bulma's area of the house. He could hear distinct yelling coming from the other side of the house. Why didn't you tell me he was here? HHH Chichi I can explain wait wait I just did my Miku dash Goku at that point. Just shrugged his shoulders and waited inside the car to wait until the girl fight stopped. The car ride to the fighting grounds was no doubt awkward for everyone involved as Goku sat between two bickering women. He zoned out of their conversation until the tournament grounds came into view. Stepping out of the hover car and onto the sidewalk, Chichi immediately went to his side and hugged his arm. Whoa Chichi, 
That was unexpected. Truly caught off guard, he stumbled a bit before looking at the young girl for an explanation. Chichi, get off of him. You are hogging my space. Instead, his heated girlfriend came into play and told Chichi off. Yeah, Chichi. I mean, isn't this a little too close? I don't know if you know, but Bulma and I got together recently, so you shouldn't do this. Wait, you didn't tell him, Bulma. No, I didn't. You need to tell him. Why would I tell him? Wait, what? Goku was finally tuning into one of their arguments, as he was genuinely confused at the situation. They did not get further into their discussion when they heard an old familiar voice wave at them. Hey, is that you, Bulma and Chichi? Wait, is that Goku? Coming from the direction of the tournament grounds, Roshi, Launch, Oolong, and Pua strode up to them in their sleek umbrellas. What's up you guys? Glad to see you all doing well. Where are the others? Wow, my boy, you have grown tremendously on your training trip with Kami. Bonga and Chichi have as well. You three aren't the same kids as you were when I met you so long ago. Hey, y'all. We all met up right now. Look at how much we have improved. Then Krillin, Xiaotzu, Yamcha, and Chen walked into the picture with their wacky new attire. Their power seeped out into the open alerting any competent fighter to stay away from them at all costs. Wow you guys look great. I can't wait for the matches coming up. I am pumped up already. They were just as shocked as the others with Goku's transformation. If Kid Goku was already so powerful, how much will adult Goku be with God's training? Hey Goku, I just want to let you know that we have been training our butts off with that gravity belt that Bulma made. We have been seeing leaps and bounds with our training. Why you didn't use the belt in conjunction with Kami's training, did you? No, I didn't, not even once. I was training on some more important stuff. Before he could elaborate to Yancha's query, the tournament's host voice boomed over everyone telling them that sign-ups are closing soon. Guess we have to go. The Z fighters had a certain spring to their step while traversing through the abnormally large crowd. Getting in the line like before, they went up to the booth to sign up when they noticed the mass were whispering to each other. Goku couldn't care less about what they were whispering about, and signed himself up for the tournament. Looking over his shoulder when he felt someone train their eyes on him. He saw a green person with elf ears and a turban looking at him with a challenging stare. When the others noticed, all of them started having Vietnam flashbacks to the days where they were nothing but dirt in front of someone just like him. Don't worry guys, I can take him on. They then saw Goku and the wall that he represents against their enemies. With his training with God, surely he could not lose. The preliminaries were as uneventful as always, with Chiaotsu mixing and distributing to different tournament blocks. Something strange happened, at least to the Z Fighters. The people who fought Goku and some of the Z Fighters instantly forfeited the match. In fact, Goku's entire block that he was supposed to fight, all resigned leaving him time to observe the other fighters and their training over the years. From his acute sense, he was able to determine that Chen was able to reach 4x in gravity, while the others were able to at least achieve 3x. Gravity manipulation and its effects really snowball in later levels, making it easier and easier to advance. Once you get used to it, that is all for the preliminaries. Can all the qualifiers please gather around me? The blonde announcer was back better than ever pretending like three years ago was just a bad dream. Goku, it has been a long time and you have grown so much taller. I want to thank you for what you did to me all those years ago. And I hope you win in this tournament once again. Piccolo snorted while Goku awkwardly smiled at the man's public display of bias in front of the competitors. After that everyone pulled from the box in the announcer's hands, gaining their match number. Match 1, Krillin vs. Yajirobe. Match 2, Yamcha vs. Piccolo. Match 3, Goku vs. Tien. Match 4, Chiaotzu vs. Shen. For the first match of the tournament, we have Krillin from the right corner. Once again wearing his Turtle Hermit merch, the independent monk has come up on stage once again to try his hand in the pot. On the left corner, we have a new face on the scene, Yajirub. Coming from deep in the mountains, he is here to show all the city folk what the wilderness has done to him. Let the first match start. The announcer announced the first match and stepped out of the arena, allowing the two contestants to face each other. Hey Chichi, isn't that the guy that we met when we were out looking for the Dragon Balls? Bomber got a closer look at this Yajirub guy that sounded familiar, and realized that they had met him before. Oh yeah, I remember H.I.M. Tilda, start of flashback, beep, beep, beep. 
The radar says that the Dragon Ball should be around here. Bulma was cutting through some trees with an adventurous garb on, while Chichi also wore the same attire on her flank. Just a couple more oomph. What the? Bulma walked right into what she thought was a yellow rock all of a sudden. Stumbling back, both she and Chichi tripped over themselves to the ground. Who is it? Not phased at all. The yellow rock appeared to be a man with a sword hanging from his waist. With wild, unkempt hair he looked down at the two girls that were trying to stand up. What are you are doing just laying on the ground there? I'm walking here. You two are the ones who disturbed my nap. I should be asking what you two are doing here. Logic on either side wasn't really sound at all making the whole argument worthless. Bulma was about to go on until her eyes got blinded by a reflecting coming from the guy's necklace. Seeing the Dragon Ball hanging like a shiny ornament on an ugly Christmas tree, she had to stop herself short. That is the last Dragon Ball, and just before the World Martial Arts Tournament started. Hey, I really need the thing on your neck. I have been looking for it for a long time. What, this thing? Yajirob unhooked the strings and dangled it over Bomber's hand, only to snatch it away when she clasped it. What do I get for it? I found this a couple of weeks ago, and from what I know around these parts is finders keepers. Yajirob had a smirk on his face from the extortion. Maybe the useless ball could net him a BJ if they are desperate. The smug look turned into one of shame when his stomach growled quite loudly, as if it knew of its audience. How about I give you a year's worth of food? Bomber's smile grew wider when the short man agreed pretty easily excited at the prospect. Throwing down a capsule, a refrigerator popped out of the smoke capturing the young man's attention. Hopping onto her hoverbeck, the two sped away to their house not looking back. Opening the large fridge, he saw a very stocked fridge full of ingredients and meat. What? This isn't a year's worth, this is barely a week worth. Those scammers. End of flashback, didn't know he was much of a fighter. Bomber concluded the flashback that the two had of the guy that had left a small impression on them. Yadra burst towards Krillin with a wild demeanor. The trained martial artist analyzed his movement and moved according to them. Locking the fist coming for his head, he went for a headbutt from an egg to a hedgehog. Thinking that his endurance will hold up, Yajirob angled his head to dull the impact, and waited for it to come. When it did it came hard and strong. Sporting a huge new bump, Yajirob sunk to the ground a couple of centimeters, while gritting his teeth. What the fuck is this strength? I only came here to find that girl to pay me for that ball I gave her. Seeing the kick coming for his rib, Yadrob was able to block with his other hand. Both appendages of opposite sides were in his grasps. He used brute strength and pushed forward with the momentum he had. Krillin tried as hard as he could to keep a fort with his one leg, but he was getting closer and closer to the ledge, with Yadrob finally feeling like he had a chance. One step away from being disqualified, one last hurrah pushed Krillin out of the ring, but instead of falling like Yadrob that he would happen, the little man started to float in the air like magic. Looking up in despair, he saw Krillin's shiny head once more before his nose caved in from the impact. And the winner is Krillin. For the next match, we have come back once more with his former schoolmates, Is Yancha. Will the fan favorite rise on top today or will he plummet like every other time? On the left corner, we have Demon Jr. who looks uncanny to the Demon King Piccolo appearance three years ago in this tournament. Maybe it's his son avenging his father by challenging Goku? Or maybe he will conquer the world like his papa? Let the second match begin. Yancha got chills down his spine when looking into the eyes of Junior. Reminded him too much of how useless they all were against the might of the Demon King. Are you not going to move Bug or am I? Yancha geared himself up. He has trained hard these last three years. He is not the man that he was before. And the winner is Demon Junior. The audience felt it too much pity when they looked at the down form of Yancha on the ground. He didn't have any outward injuries, but the whites of his eyes showed his unconsciousness. Despite showing off his new baseball move, the spirit ball, Junior was able to move behind him though the erratic ball. Yancha was unable to retaliate to the insane speed, and was knocked down with just a karate chop to the neck. The announcer was hyping up Piccolo's strength, knowing that he will advance to the final round. Yamcha really did get a lot stronger in the gap of three years, so this Demon Jr. is more powerful than I expected. Chen was observing the fight with the others in the back. Piccolo walked past them bumping Chen's shoulder, making him fall over easily, like proving a point. He is powerful, but I don't think you should be looking at his match. 
but you are own right now. Goku reached out a hand and helped him up. Just as Chen brushed off the dirt that accumulates on his butt, their names were called out to step into the ring. From the right corner, we have the previous school member of the infamous Crane Hermit School Chen Shinhan. He came in second place in the last tournament, losing to Goku who was crowned the champion. Will he avenge himself or will he be walking away once again? On the left corner, we have the previous champion of the World Martial Arts Tournament Goku. He had an enormous growth spurt from when we last saw him, but hopefully, his strength has also gone through a growth spurt as well. Let the third match begin. I know our strengths are probably not even, but I still wish you use everything you got. Qian spoke while jumping forward with an incredibly serious face on. All three eyes were trained on the newly adult Goku waiting for him to move. Instead of the standard battle that he was expecting of attack and counter, Goku was the only one attacking at all. To stop the Chen's momentum, Goku did a fast high kick that left as fast it came. Not stopping for a second, he jumped up with one leg and did a kick with his entire body supporting him. Chen was able to dodge the first relatively easy but the second kick was too fast for him. The kick barely touched his cheek, but left a small scratch to show how powerful it was. Landing smoothly, he then did rapid punches to every part of his body. Chen was too slow to keep up, and it all stopped when he was punched in between the neck and chest. He flew back but was able to control it somewhat with his flight. When he stabilized himself, he decided to fire back with a risky play by making both of his fingers glow, shooting the Doden rays at the spots that Goku once was. The beams were not coming fast enough, and Chen completely forgot that he could win when someone rams a fist in your stomach. Training for three years under insane pressure, literally and figuratively, allowed Chen to achieve great boons in strength. But Goku was just too powerful for him to handle. And it's not just pure strength anymore like he felt the previous times he was outmatched. This time there was something else that supported him and wormed its way through Chen's defenses. That made him that much stronger. Tian could not embarrass himself any longer and decided to give up right there. I give, and that is the match. Last tournament world champion easily defeats his rival from the last tournament. It looks like the Goku has far surpassed him and entered his own league. Will anyone dethrones him or will he take the crown once again? Moving on to the last match before the semi-finals. We have a returning contestant that quite the crane school with his partner Chen, Xiaotzu. His opponent is one of surprise, one of absolute ordinary Shen. Will the severe underdog beat the seasoned veteran? Let the match being. Everyone was of course confused at the prospect of one of them being in the tournament stage with someone who could probably kill him in a second. Nobody was expecting the brave man to charge headfirst the little albino man with no hesitation. Xiaotzu expressionlessly pointed his finger at him and said the magic words. Doden Ray, the light yellow beam shot out and was about to hit the man on the bridge of his glasses. Until the image faded into an afterimage of course. He appeared behind the flying man and tried to take him out with a swift blow. Instead, Chiaotsu saw him coming and moved in the same direction of the attack. It looked like Shen just pushed Chiaotsu the way he floated away. You are pretty good, too bad that you are only using your height and body for your reflexes. Jumping up, he leveled the playing field looking right into the eyes of surprise. In fact, everyone was surprised that he could give one of the toughest opponents a run for his money. However, his jump didn't just even out their altitude, he went above and beyond literally. Taking an abnormally large breath, his chest expanded only to be released back into the air into Chiaotzu's face. Chiaotzu tried so hard to brute strength through the wind, but couldn't handle the sheer pressure. Crashing on the arena floor with a splat, the wind crushed the cheeks flat for a couple of seconds. Coming out from the days of the situation, he had no time to react when he saw Shen coming down like a top. Bunching his muscles when the impact spewed dust everywhere. When the dust cleared Shen was standing next to the down martial artist. He had a sliver of consciousness within him. But that soon died out when he heard the last words the announcer. It looks like Chiaotzu is out for the count. The winner is Shen. Tian ran up on stage to help Chiaotzu. Picking up him, he gave the stank eye to Shen's smiling face. Good luck in the next round. Good luck. From what I gather, it's good luck that you lost in your round or else you would have to fight me. Not dignifying that with a response, he swiftly turned around and headed to give Chiaotzu medical attention. Shen was about to walk back into the waiting area until the break was over when a strong arm held fast onto his. Kami-sama, 
Why are you here? Do you doubt my strength? Goku talked while they were both still not looking at each other at all. That is not it Goku, you have gone far past anything I set for you. And even did your own thing for a little bit. It is just that you will not go so far as to kill Piccolo when I need you to. Shen from the very beginning, saw that Goku for some reason, did not want to kill him. No matter the reason, a seed of malice cannot cultivate and threaten the world. It doesn't matter if he lives or dies. What matters is what he does with his life. Who you are thinking about isn't a demon king, but a newborn who can still change. I am God with no evil inside of me. Piccolo is the manifestation of that evil. He and his children will carry that forever. With that, Shen forcibly pulled his arm back and went his merry way like they never talked. Goku wasn't too worried about Kami doing anything. The main thing that he was worried about is if the Mephuba will be a problem. Piccolo probably didn't learn the counter Mephuba, because Roshi didn't reveal that card to him. Looking at the person in question, he was standing on stage with a very nervous Krillin. This is the start of the semi-finals between two very talented martial artists. Whoever wins this will move to the finals, and have a chance to win the title of the world's strongest under heaven. This will be Krillin versus Piccolo. Let the match begin. I have been training for three years. I won't be thrashed around like last time. Krillin was raring to go getting a little impatient to test his strength. That was what the last person said. Yeah, but that was Yamcha starting the match. Both opponents clashed together in the center. Krillin was doing a good job keeping up with the green Yoshi. As he tried his hardest to use his small stature as an advantage. And not a weakness. Ducking under his legs after the fist fight, he stopped his momentum with his hands when he held onto the ground right behind Piccolo. Thrashing out his feet like a horse, he made Piccolo fly towards the ring out. But everyone knows that at this point, ring outs don't really mean anything anymore. Piccolo quickly stabilized himself, and did a sharp U-turn at rocketing speeds. Krillin had just stood up from his attack to be met with one of his opponents. Krillin thought that Piccolo was only going to go for a straightforward attack with the way he positioned himself and his speed. That is why he was truly surprised when his guard was completely useless to the extended arm that reached around it, crashing onto the floor harshly. He thought that his skull was going to crack as the concrete did under him. Krillin finally remembered who he was dealing with. It was not some run in the mill bulb or bob, but the demon Piccolo's son. His thoughts came slow and muffled. In fact, his consciousness was already blurring when he felt both of his feet getting grabbed. Piccolo landed in front of Krillin where his feet were stationed and grabbed a hold of them. He then flipped Krillin out of the stage and onto the spectator stance. There you can see two people talking not paying attention to fight at all. Hey lady, I finally found you. Last time we met you told me I would get a year's worth of food, but instead, I got only a week's worth and some other useless garbage. Yadrib finally found Bulma after going through the crowd annoying a lot of people. Oh, it's you. That's why you are here. I knew you weren't strong when you got eliminated so quickly. I forgot you wild folk eat so much. I am not weak. I, it's just those guys are monsters. Anyway, I am here for that payment that you still owe me. Yadrib wanted to get his food and leave as quickly as possible. The crowds annoyed him to no end. Well, I don't have your kind of year's worth, but um, oh, I got an idea. Reaching into her pocket, she pulled up a small gadget that looked like a gun with a cone instead of a barrel. Aiming it at Yajirab before he could do anything, she fired the gun. Everyone around her from the previous tournament remembered what that horrible thing did and quickly stepped back leaving Yajirab to his fate. What is that? Wait, what is happening to me? Yajirab was shrinking as he was talking. He couldn't move as he was shrinking as he saw the world grow larger and larger. It was finally done when he was slightly smaller than the size of her phone. What did you do to me? Yajirab's voice came out squeaky and cute, betraying his words and intentions. Oh, stop whining, will you? This way you can eat more for less. I will give you a fridge again. So don't eat everything like last time. Just click this button when you want to grow again. She tossed him a tiny button and capsule. His eyes lit up when the thought of doing everything while small dawned on him. But before he could reach out to his prize, the world around him started to get darker and darker. Looking up at the sun to see what was the problem, he instead saw a falling monk in orange come straight at him. Krillin's butt landed directly on the poor man. 
He felt like a hot dog, unable to move or protest at his situation. Bulma took one look at the sleeping Krillin and her, and Chi-Chi decided to move to the other side of the arena to get a better look. Here comes the second match of the semi-finals. Will the previous world champion be able to beat the surprisingly strong Shen that popped up out of nowhere? Let the match begin. Kami, I respect you, and I am grateful for everything that you taught me, but unfortunately, I will have to beat you here. It was Goku's turn to show his mentor that everything he did wasn't in vain. Goku, as your master, I know of a weakness that even you may not know of. Good luck overcoming it. This was Shen's only chance to win. He knew Goku monstrous strength will triumph, so he could only win with some leverage. And I know something about you too. Do you wish to know what it is? Shen leaned in to hear what weakness could he possibly have leaked out to his student. But before he could think any more, his vision turned black as he fainted. Goku was in front of him and punched him right in the solar plex. Normally you wouldn't faint from the attack, but he twisted it in a way that would hit the sweet spot of his fainting. Goku's voice was coming from his after image. Distracting the god as Goku did his top speed to do his attack. When Goku heard that Kami knew his weakness, he couldn't take any chances at that point. The only option was to end it fast and quickly. He only needs to wake up and see everything work out. Ay and wow, what a knockout. The winner is Goku. Picking up the poor man who was dragged into this conflict due to pure luck. He set him down in the player stands. And got ready for the next match. You are more powerful than I expected. Off to the side with his overhanging cape and turban. Piccolo was leaning against the side wall with his eyes trained on Goku. Didn't know the great demon king would shake in his boots like his dad. Piccolo spat on the floor and left Goku with the fainted man to go up to the stage. The only thought that crossed his mind was vengeance to the highest degree. Goku let out a little snort in response. It was pretty fun teasing the big guy any way he could. There was only so much time he could delay before the crowd would get testy. So he turned around to face the music. Passing by his friends that were spectating, he asked him to look over Shen for him. Confused by the relationship that the two seemingly shared, they agreed to it keeping the fainted man in their peripherals. We are finally here ladies and gentlemen, the finals of the 23rd World Martial Tournament. All of your suspense and tension has led to his moment of who we will find out the strongest person under the heavens. On our left corner, we have the defending champion of the last tournament who will be doing his best to keep the title, Son Goku. On the right corner, we have the challenger, the underdog, Junior. Will he be stomped down and put in his place by the residing champion? Or will he rise above and dethrone the king? Let's find out. Let the match begin. Let us put this three-year grudge to rest Son Goku. Piccolo instantly started to move to gain an advantage in the fight. Since he already showed this ability before, he didn't hesitate to extend his arms at insane speeds and latch onto both of his shoulders. Goku was about to pry those hands off of him, but by now retracting his arms, his entire body flew throughout the stage towards Goku. When he reached him, Piccolo kneed him the gut lifting him up a little bit. He then slammed his fist on Goku's cheek to make him fly away. The heavy combo didn't seem to do much, but put some dirt on his cheek as he flipped over and skid back making a black streak on the floor. Piccolo knew that his overall power is weaker, so he didn't let up for a second in his run to make sure Goku didn't catch his breath. Unfortunately for him, he was one step too late. Timing it with Piccolo's fast arrival, he aimed and uppercut as a counter-attack. Unable to stop his momentum completely, he went with the direction of the punch to lessen the damage. It didn't feel like it did anything at all. He got launched incredibly hard in the air, but even though his body was stasis, his eyes were darting everywhere to catch a glimpse of his opponent. And Goku met his expectation when he appeared on his left side to continue the combo. Instead, Junior responded with a loaded fist when he saw the first coming to his face. Both attacks landed squarely at the same time, and they both flew in different directions. Goku went up and eventually stopped on his own, while Piccolo was sent straight down. He landed like a cat with one hand on the ground and veins bulging around his head. How is he so strong? Was all of my training in vain? Flashback, there is one of those fighters that my father could smother with his pinky. Looking through the window, teenager Piccolo Jr. was peering through the window of Yancha's residence. He heard loud moans accompany him leaking to the open night, making Piccolo want to peek through. Oh, you like that? Well, take some more. 
Inside the apartment was an incredibly beautiful woman with a purple afro and lean muscle. Her attire was nearly non-existent, as it consisted of very short leather extending from her shoes to her chest, covering the important parts. In her hands, it looks like a long black rope R whip. You fucking like that, you whore. On the ground being lashed repeated on the butt was what looked like bondage and blindfolded Yancha, with an incredibly hard piece of meat. Despite its small length, it was a hard. That counts for something. Piccolo wasn't interested in the masochistic male psyche and started to look at what he came there for. He saw a white belt with a blue circle in the middle of it on a desk next to the window he was at. Using his long arms, Piccolo carefully yoinked the gravity belt and due to his rush accidentally, grazed the lamp on the desk. Yancho with his acute ears, heard a very faint sound. He was extremely embarrassed by the situation and wanted to stop right there to investigate the situation. W wait ran fan. I think I hear dash. Quiet slave. A whip of crack sprung from the dom landed squarely on the small target resting in between his legs. He quickly forgot about the noise when liquid started to appear in copious amounts. And it wasn't blood. I've trained for nearly two years and was able to reach 4x gravity. He is still winning all the exchange with power to spare. You won't be able to win against this. Say your prayers. Piccolo, with no turban or cape from the fight before, crouched like he was able to poop his pants and charged up his Kai. Injecting Kai to himself, he slowly grew larger and larger until he was 15 meters tall. This is the end of you, Son Goku. How can you possibly beat me now that I multiplied my power? Taking up his challenge, he decided to put his training with Kami to use. What a better way to test his power on a respectable partner. Taking a deep breath, he closed his eyes and put out his hand like it was about to grab something. Slowly but surely, a chunk of his Kai was being converted into a small round ball. What is Goku making? It looks similar to my spurt ball but I can tell it has different properties. Yamcha was chatting a storm with the engrossed battle session. What? No way he did it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the venue, Bomber clasped her hand over her mouth. They moved back to their original place with Krillin still lying on the floor. Because she felt bad, she decided to help the small guy a little. She fished out one of her spare capsules and clicked on it. Smoke came as usual, and what revealed was actually quite convenient for the situation. Lifting Krillin's head, she places the pillow that appeared under him and draped him in a nice cozy blanket. Nice, comfortable, and warm for everyone involved. Goku finally threw the ball of light that he created, but he didn't throw it like a weapon. He actually threw it outside of bounds in a high position to not be distracting. He turned to look at his creation. His pupils dilated into nothingness as he started to grow a monstrous size. Monkey features popped to and fro until his entire body resembled an ape. The top part of his guy and shirt ripped open easily. But strangely, the bottom part of the guy didn't as they stretched and stretched to match the size of its host. Standing at the same height as Piccolo, the two did another stare off in their new forms as titans in the world of battle. He actually created something from my notes. He mastered the Blutz waves to turn into a great ape. Flashback. Hey Bomber, what are you doing? A teenage Bomber was interrupted from her work when a short, spiky hair Saiyan walked into the room with a towel. It looked like he just freshly showered as he wiped the water dripping down his hair. Bomber, however, even after hearing his voice only stopped for a couple of seconds before continuing what she was doing. If you are looking for an update on the gravity belt, I am almost finished with it. Just give me three more days before it is ready to be used. I, uh, actually came here for something else. This time Bomber stopped her work, turned around, and gave Goku her undivided attention. Do you remember the Saiyan book from a couple of weeks ago? Bomber gave Goku's answer with an obvious yes. Something that outrageous could not leave someone's mind even if they wanted to. Well, I want you to do me a favor if you want. Inside the book, it talks about these things called Blutz Waves. I want you to study them more and see what it is about. Those things, huh? I remember when I read the book to get more than the summarized version you read out to us. I keep seeing that word pop up to and fro, curious to look into something like that. The book was pretty robust, detailing everything one needs to know about the Saiyan race. When Goku asked if the others would ever want to borrow it to read, they all declined and said that his summary sufficed. Now it sits in his bedroom in Capsule Corporation when it isn't used by Bulma. 
her dad, or occasionally Chichi. Goku raised his eyebrow when Bulma started to get lost in her own world about what Blut's waves could possibly be used for. Sure, I will work on finding more about it when I have time. Bulma waved Goku off to finish her project at hand. The deadline was in three days so she is in a time crunch. Thanks Bulma. End of flashback. Thanks Bulma. Goku said a few words in a slightly deeper voice that was appropriate for his size. The bottom half of his guy stayed with him, thanks to some modification with Kami's clothes beam. His eyes were filled with unbridled rage, but deep down inside he was getting karma and karma by the second. This was the first step in mastering the eight transformation, and that was what he was doing in Kami's lookout for the majority of the time. The Kai exercises were easy since he already had the basics and they taught him more basic martial arts. In between those lessons, he would take out Bulma's notes that he snatched before he left for Kami's and study them. Luckily Bulma simplified it a little for him to understand, and with his knowledge of their properties already, he was about to replicate the power ball that Vegeta used to turn into a great ape. He was barely able to create the technique for the three-year mark, and with all the great ape training that he has been doing monthly, this technique was actually viable. Now he only needed a test dummy. And what better test dummy than the one in front of him? Besides Yamcha that is ha 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 ha. Who knew that you are also a monster just like me? You are an actual monkey who thought that growing as big as me will change the outcome. I will show you how much stronger I am than you in this form. Piccolo started to hysterically laugh at the prospect of fighting a giant monkey. But he decided to humor the lad. The audience this time was oddly calm about the situation. No one was screaming bloody murder or nothing. They just backed away to give the two more space to fight. The people that came here were either here when Goku first turned into a great ape or saw it on the internet. They just thought it was Goku's trump card like last time. And they wouldn't be hurt from the after effects. Amidst the crowd, there was Bulma looking away from the fight to look at the still sleeping Krillin on the floor and weird thrust that was originating from his butt area. At this point, Bulma felt bad for the small man, and decided to help him, so she could get back to watching the fight. He was in this uncomfortable position for long enough, and he needs the rest after what he has been through. So, she reached into her pocket and grabbed a capsule. She pressed the button on it, and what came out was perfect for this exact scenario. Here you go. This should help. Lifting Krillin's head up, she slid in a small pillow under, so he could stop resting on the hard floor. After that, she went to his side and reached for the second item. With one smooth whip, she neatly placed a blanket on top of the monk covering him from the neck under in a soft wrapping. This blanket was specially designed to keep the heat in and was super soft. With the wind blowing heavily on Krillin's head, his head will be cool, while everything in the blanket will be nice and cozy. Looking back up at the match, they have already started, and there was even more turbulence, with all the wind blowing from their giant punches. Being as big as they are, you can't move too much, or they will get out of bounds, so all they can do is attack and block. Why won't you go down? Piccolo thought he had it in the bag. Revenge, conquest, all the girls on the planet. If it wasn't for this one wild monkey, Goku thought it was time to finish the match. He was just standing still, and the barrage of attacks didn't faze him one bit. Grabbing one of the hands that were attacking him, he lifts Piccolo's entire body, and slammed him on the ground like he did his father. He crashed where the audience was a few moments earlier before they stepped back spooking the ones in the front. Then he was lifted up and slammed, but on the other side of the arena, this happened back and forth with just the right amount of strength so he wouldn't faint. Bringing up the mangled Piccolo to his eye level, he said one more thing before he was going to send him off. Puny devil, you are not your dad that was the incarnation of evil. You are who you are, not the demon king nor the seed of evil. With those words, he started to swing him like he was a lasso high in the air, so people wouldn't get hurt. Yeah. He threw Piccolo as far away as he could. His form disappeared in that direction after a couple of seconds. Piccolo needed a seed of doubt in his identity, so that he could eventually grow as a person. If all hits the fan, he would be prepared anyways to permanently put him down. Goku turned to the power ball that was still shining brightly in the sky. It will naturally dissipate in a couple of more minutes as he is still a novice in the technique. 
but he decided to show off a little bit. Opening his mouth, he fired a small red laser right into the center of the ball. After a few more seconds, the power ball exploded with light just like a firework would. It sparkled all around the venue and dazzled the already dazed audience. Goku slowly shrank down to his original size in the middle of the cracked arena. When he got out of it, he started to pant incredibly hard. Shooting out a power ball was already draining enough. But transforming into a giant ape when he hasn't fully gained control over it makes you mentally exhausted. Everything was quiet with the only noise being Goku's ragged breathes, Krillin's snores, and some weird noise from under his blanket that faintly sounded like a dying banshee. To quiet the noise, Bulma slowly pressed on the spot where it was coming from, avoiding the obstacle, and stopped when it was fully muffled. The awkward silence was unnerving for everyone. It was broken when Chichi started to clap. It was a chain of events that sporadically started when the first person did it. Cheers and screaming started too erupted with the clapping, as everyone was blowing their casket at what they just witnessed. They all came from the video that was viral online with Goku and Piccolo's battle. Turns out the strongest man alive was not just a hoax, but the real deal. It was so loud, that no one heard or reacted when the announcer announced the winner of the tournament. And the winner of the 23rd World Martial Tournament is Son Goku. Everyone was crowded in a circle in the spectator area. In the middle of their circle was Krillin sleeping, and they all were discussing the various things that happen. Like Yamcha losing his belt, Bulma and Goku dating, and Roshi's incident with Oolong, when he transformed into Launch's panties to get in. Let's just say, they were both traumatized after it wasn't Launch who was the victim. Wow, you guys are dating, huh? I thought it would be you and Chichi who would get together. I guess it isn't too late for that though. Wait what? Pua just said something peculiar, and seemingly no one thought it was strange. Before he could press on the subject or if he was hearing things, they all heard a sound coming from under them. Krillin stirred from his knockout after missing out on everything that happened. He looked up and saw everyone standing around him. He asked what happened and got the gist of it when Oolong explained it to him. Man, I miss out on everything. I must be the unluckiest one here to miss that battle. Everyone hummed their agreement that he indeed missed out a lot. I wouldn't say unluckiest Bomber had to disagree on the subject. It was getting late, and they all needed to get home and sleep. Krillin was about to stand up from his soft spot on the floor, before his stomach rumbled intensely. He groaned when his lunch started to go lower and lower to the exit. Must be the beans I ate earlier. Hold on, guys. I need to go to the restroom. He clenched his cheeks to hold it in as long as possible, as he stood up and ran straight towards the bathroom. Goku looked at Krillin for a little bit and saw something on his backside sticking out. A familiar chubby arm was sticking out of Krillin's rear, flailing for dear life. When Goku realized the destination that he was heading to, Goku gave out a prayer for his soul. May you rest in peace. Goku woke up the next morning with two weights on each side of him. Opening his eyes, it returns himself to the surreal experience from the night before of debauchery, when he saw the two girls laying beside him. It was only this week when he lost his virginity, and now he has been doing it as much as he breathes. There needs some explaining to be done. Getting out of bed, without disturbing the two girls, he went to the kitchen to grab a bite to eat, after doing a quick rinse in the bathroom, he made breakfast and waited on the couch for the girls to come down. Eventually, the two girls come down all freshened up and see Goku on the couch watching TV waiting for them. Hey girls, we need to talk about last night. Goku turned off the TV and looked at them expectantly. Both of them looked at each other and sat next to Goku to explain to him from the beginning. Do you remember when we found out that you were the last of your race from the Saiyan book? Bomber gently explained. She was better at explaining the situation, so she took the lead. Ah oh yeah, you read that book a dozen more times than me. Goku had a faint foreboding at what they were going to say to him. He couldn't tell if he liked it or not. So we decided to both become your lovers after we found out the other had feelings for you. That way it is a win-win for everybody. We love you, and you are able to revive your race. Besides, having sex with Chichi is super fun. She put her arm around Chichi and brought her close to her breasts. She blushed insanely hard with the memories from last night and pushed Bomber off of her to regain her breathe. Eee, but how this isn't something that is normal? Won't people disagree and ostracize us? Wait a minute dash Goku then remembered the thing that Pua said to him at the tourney grounds. 
How are it sounded so weird but said like it was normal. You don't mean looks like you figured it out. Yes, we used the wish for this to happen. What? You wasted a wish just for this. It wasn't wasted. This is something that is extremely important to us. We thought and talked about it forever. Bulma was ready for the backlash that Goku was going to unleash on her when he found out. This was the reason why they agreed to do it without him knowing, and Goku knew that. Goku sat back down from standing abruptly, and started to really think about the situation. He rubbed the bridge of his nose and posed Bomber a question. What exactly did you wish for? He needed to know what he was dealing with and the limitation of the wish. Imagine explaining the others when a shadow dragon of this wish pops up. We wish for polygamy to be normal when it comes to you and only you. That way, people will see us as a normal thing while the act of polygamy is still unnatural to others. Wait, so you wished for everyone who sees polygamy as a problem, not a problem when regards to me. Goku was now realizing the scope of the situation. It technically doesn't span the entire universe but affects it all the same. Any being who interacts with him that is on a lower level than a reality bending dragon god will see polygamy as normal. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you will be adding girls like a harem. Don't be so full of yourself, you are all for us. Not that we don't mind even with Chichi around, we still can't sedate your hunger for sex. Speaking of which, you owe me for doing this behind my back. I expect it to be good. Oh, it will. Chichi already started to unbutton his shorts, and Bomber came to help. Six months, you know, you didn't have to marry us so fast. Bomber complained at the fast wedding they were putting up. Chichi and Bomber were together planning the wedding in a week. Of course, the wedding was grand much to the protests of Chichi and Goku, but Bomber said she wouldn't have it any other way. Say that to the babies in your bellies. Besides, if I waited any longer, old man Ox King would chop my head off. Goku was helping move stuff that was too heavy for others to save some time. All invitations were already sent out to their friends, so everything was set. Yeah, no kidding you horned dog. What did you think was going to happen with us doing it every day? I'm just surprised that the babies are four months old. I felt like I was pregnant the first day we had sex. Chichi enjoyed every second of it, but sometimes it's too much. Being bloated all the time isn't that great. Although they try to contain the privacy of the wedding as much as they can, the news goes out, and it became an internet sensation within minutes. As expected from the heiress of Capsule Corporation and the recently popular strongest man on Earth, videos of Goku from the tournament and his various fights displayed him at all his glory, making him visible to the public eye. Goku had to say that it was incredibly weird that the internet and news stations were covering his wedding of him marrying two people. Basically, everyone on Earth has been exposed, and now thinks it is normal for him to be in a polyamorous marriage. The wedding was nice and sweet. The venue was too big for the number of people invited and too elegant for literally anyone there. News outlets and fanatics were desperately trying to get a scoop on the situation before, but the upgraded security system stopped them. Dr. Briefs calls it Build Operation Blockade, Bolivianos for short. Taking turns, they each said their vows to Goku, while Goku did the same to them. He sealed it with a kiss, and they were officially all hitched. You are one lucky guy Goku. Having two beautiful women like that, I probably won't ever have anything close. Krillin was talking to Goku at the after party. The best man had a slumped shoulder and low self-esteem due to his height. Hey, chin up, man. Think about it. You are like the second or third strongest human ever. Better than everyone on this planet. You worked hard so don't think that you are useless, man. Yeah. Yeah. You are right. They should be lucky to date me. Thanks, Goku. Maybe you can be the best man at my wedding if I have one. Ha <laughs> ha! Krillin's spirits got lifted from Goku's pep talk and clanked their glass together in a toast. I mean look at Yamcha. If he's hitting a girl like Ranfan, then surely you can do better. They both looked in the direction of Yamcha and Ranfan. Ranfan seemed like she asked Yamcha to do something but refused. She immediately yelled at him, echoing it across the venue. He scurried along to go get her the drink that she wanted, and came back at record speeds to give it to her. I don't really think that he is hitting that. Yeah, that looks like the world has not given Yamcha any breaks. They both shook their heads in amusement. What can you expect from him? That's my pupil right there. Marrying two hot chicks, 
I taught him. They told me that his dick is nearly as big as mine. Drunk Roshi had two blonde reporters in his arms. He was continuously groping them as they asked him questions. He was leading them to the back room and disappeared from sight. The two could still hear him from where they were standing. Since when have you known the two? You would like to touch it. Well, why didn't you say so? He then grabbed her hand and stuck it in his pants so deep that she completely missed the rod and touched the balls. How about you two? Please go stop him. On it. Fast forward, Goku was meditating in the gravity chamber. He felt that he was about to make a breakthrough any second. It was like on the tip of his tongue. Goku honey, come over here and watch over the baby for me. I need to finish my research. Bomber's voice reverberated throughout the chamber. Bomber's parents moved in with Ox King to give the young married couple the house to have their privacy in. He still works and contacts Bomber with projects. They are only a couple of minutes away from each other. Goku stood up to leave and turned off the ATX gravity before taking a shower. The girls were usually the ones who looked after the babies. Mostly Chichi while the other two would train or work. They all spent the time with their children making sure to be good parents. Exiting out of the shower with only pants, he went to the kitchen where Chichi was cooking diner with only an apron. He took a quick grab and walked past her and next to the jewel crib to inspect the babies. One was a boy with short black hair and beady black eyes. Next to him was a girl with short blue hair and subsequent blue eyes to match her mom. They were Gohan and Bra respectively. Goku's life has settled in a routine and a quite comfortable one at that. Wake up fully refreshed from the king-sized bed to a long workout session in the morning. Going into the kitchen to see Chichi make breakfast for them and spend time with them and the babies in the afternoon. Next was lunch then a more serious training session. After that, he would relax, eat dinner, and frolic in bed. Of course, he would get a quick shag or two in between away from the babies. He couldn't resist when they were tempting him so much. At least that is what he blamed and not his Saiyan stamina. The two, knowing how much Goku did it with no restraint, created a piece of tech that made Goku sterile when on. So whenever they were ready for another baby, they would turn it off and go ham. Bomber spent a lot of time on it making sure that it didn't interfere with the taste and even made it have a hint of whatever she wanted flavor-wise. Neat. Gohan and Bulla were raised basically as twins, even though their looks were more inclined with their mothers. Even growing up, Bulla was more forceful and assertive, while Gohan was more layback and observant. Definitely from their mother's side. It's only two years until Raditz arrives, and he has already achieved a maximum of 120 GS. However, there is a limit to how much a Saiyan's body can go through by just continuous reps in gravity intense situation. Not everything is about the body. With all the years of research on Goku's spaceship, they were about to create an ultra-fast spaceship. That has been seeing positive results in its testing. With this, they could set a foothold in the environment of space and explore its endless possibilities. Goku normally trains under 80 to 100 GS as default as he can still feel growth and only goes higher, if he wants to push himself. Chichi was the model housewife looking after the kids and cooking meals. Bomber was the designated breadwinner, except she already has a lot of dough to work with. So she only worked when she found it fun to research something and spent the rest of the time with her family. Goku trained a lot in the morning and noon, but really enjoyed spending time with the girls or play with the kids when the girls needed a break. Even if his ginormous endurance, dealing with kids was still a pain in the neck. Although they never trained, they were still stronger than the average person making Chichi and Bulma break a sweat whenever they tried to deal with them. Especially Bulla as she threw tantrums while Gohan just stood in the sideline and benefited from it. They would sometimes give in or distract her with food, and Gohan would join in and reap some of the benefits without doing anything. The quiet ones are always the scariest. The thing that really threw the girls off their game was the use of the tails from the infants. With the little appendage sticking out of their butt, they were able to use it to climb easier, grab things better and really just outwit them when they didn't expect it. The two had a room next to their parents. But like all good parents, they created high-tech soundproof walls to shield their ears every night. He hasn't really seen the others at all with them doing their own things. They only came over to get updated versions of their gravity belts and give and receive updates about life. Goku's fame in this world is on another level compared to the alternative. His internet fame transitioned to ones in par with celebrities after his third appearance in the World Martial Arts Tournament, 
and his relationship with one of the most powerful women has been revealed. Memes and articles have circulated about him continuously, which made the situation even more surreal. Living a life of comfort like this was something he always dreams of. But he knew that he could not stop, at least for the foreseeable future about getting stronger. Two years later, for the last time Gohun we were just playing around in the closet eating ice cream. Your Aunt Bomba really enjoys it, so I have to give it to her daily. Now onto the task at hand, the most fun way to fish is to have your tail in the water Goku, and the two kids were out in the forest by a lake fishing. Having some dad time and teach them the Saiyan way to fish was really the only good way to fish. So like this. Bulla dipped her tiny tail in the water, bobbing it back and forth like her dad beside her. Gohan quickly copied Bulla's movement, completely forgetting his suspicion in the conversation before. Man, Bulma really needs to create something to counter that. Alright, I will stand back and watch. When you see the fish about to bite, pull your tail back and let me do the rest. They had a lot of fun in the lake, catching two big fish, after Goku quickly chopped at them when they came back. He called Nimbus and let the two kids ride as he flew side by side. By the time they got the house, the sun was already going down. Shichi expertly whipped up an excellent fried fish dish, and started to read the kids a bedtime story to have them sleep. Goku went to the back and looked up in the starry sky, wondering if he could see something special. What's the matter? His wife came behind him dressed for bed, as in not dressed at all, and asked him with a look of concern. It wasn't every day that he had a serious look on his face, like the world is going to be turned upside down. It's nothing really, we should go to bed. Tomorrow was the day Raditz lands on Earth, at least if his memory serves him correct. His evil blood brother, wonder how he will react to how much stronger he is than him. The kids should be asleep by now, and I think you need all the time two can get if you want to get through a night of Chichi's fetishes. That lady is so sweet on the outside, but can really surprise you with how out there she is in the bedroom. A quick peck on the lips and they headed to the bedroom to find Chichi shrunken and tied to a dildo standing erect on the bed. What the? How did she works for me? Goku woke up with a yawn and stretched his huge arms. He didn't get much sleep last night, but they needed to wake up early to meet up with the gang at the Turtle Island. They decided that they need to meet every year and more because of how long the separation has been. This was the final nail in the coffin in confirming that Raditz was coming today. He woke up the sleeping beauties and went off to take a shower. They joined him and after their long shower, Goku got the kids in the shower, while the girls did their makeup. After everyone was ready, they headed off in their helicopter. As they were flying to the secluded island, a ship crashed in the middle of nowhere next to a running vehicle. The owner of the vehicle was startled from the incoming foreign object, and drove straight to it like any other sane human being. Arriving at the crater that the impact caused, the farmer got the shotgun from his truck, and loaded it with bullets. This alien is going to get a face full of bullets from my trusty shotgun. Merica? Wait why did I say that? What is Merica? What are these words coming from my mouth? It's the aliens doing. Nothing can survive my double barrel. A humanoid figure walked out of the pod that crashed into the ground and observed his surrounding. He leaped out the hole with his hair flowing majestically with him. He saw the short human and device in his hand. Stay back alien or I will mow you down like an halo. Raditz wasn't listening to him, but instead started to talk to himself. What is Kakarot doing? Why hasn't genocide occurred yet? Speaking like a Nazi, he touched the scouter on his ear and scrolled through the text that displayed it to him. Is this alien crazy or something? Does he not see that loom of death that I have him in right now? His life is literally one trigger away, one click. Raditz finally noticed the guy making him jump back a little. Raditz spat at the man penetrating his stomach all the way through. He then started to slowly fly up in the sky, and follow the power level that was displayed on his screen. Ma trusty shotgun, I failed you follow me to heaven, my love. The family of five finally arrived at the turtle house in a timely fashion, and milled out of the ship. Krillin, Oolong, Yancha, Pua, and Roshi came out of the house to meet up with them and was surprised when they were bulldozed by a small tank. Bulla get back here, you don't just do that to everyone you see. Bulla was standing on top of a pile of fallen warriors like a queen, and pouted when her mom called her down. Looks like the light training that Goku has put the both of them through, has seen some significant improvements. 
Fine mommy, you are so boring. She ran up to her mother's side next to Gohan, who just started to apologize to the men that were getting up. She is your daughter Goku. She packs quite the punch. Yancha really felt that in his ribs when he crashed into the floor. He was feeling extremely embarrassed because he was beaten up by a girl, but constellated himself by repeating in his head that it was Goku's child. Yeah, she is really growing fast. She might even be stronger than you. Everyone laughed at Goku's joke. Yamcha laughed so hard that tears started to stream from his face like an ocean. Anyways, I would like to introduce you to my children. The feisty one you saw was Bulla Brief son, and she is Bulma and my daughter. Say hi Bulla. Goku gently patted her shoulder to give her the cue to talk. She gave out a little cute smile and waved to her audience. But they saw differently. That was definitely the smile of the devil. This is Sun Gohan. He is a little shy. But together they make two peas in a pod. They both turn four this year. Gohan waved at the group after getting a nudge from Bulla. Bulma decided to hyphenate their last names together. While Chichi just wanted to take the full last name of Goku. This way, it would be easier to identify for others whose child is who. So you have been training the martial arts Goku. Aren't they a little too young for that kind of stuff? Master Roshi was concerned. Goku's children or not, four years of age could leave a strain in their adult bodies. If they went through the rigorous martial arts already. Oh no, some light exercises to strengthen their bodies. Besides, they are hybrids so they grow fast and are much stronger than you think. Bulma and Chichi picked up Fire Child and started to coddle them in love. Bulla was trying to get out of it. But even with her hybrid powers, she couldn't escape her mother's love. Gohan just sighed and took it. Everyone sweat dropped at such an extremely different personality by two different babies by the same person. Really shows how much the mothers play a role in Thaya behaviors. Goku felt something in the back of his spine, a high power that was fast approaching him. He turned to look in its direction, completely missing the ongoing conversation that was happening. Dad, what's wrong? Gohan was the first to notice that his dad stopped talking, and everyone looked at Goku. Someone is coming, someone with a high battle power. He is right there, do you see him? Looking at the sky, they all saw an incoming human flying straight toward them with killer intent. Raditz had a smirk on his face as he descended upon the unsuspecting humans. He headed towards the first high power level he spotted on this garbage of a floating rock. A power level of only 500, how cute and adorable. What is the hold up Kakarot? Why haven't all these weak vermin been taken care of yet? You take your sweet time before slaughtering them like the sheep that they are. Raditz and Goku were looking at each other. But Goku's eyes weren't fixed on Raditz's like he was. No, what he looked at was the massive widow's peak that was as spiky as his hair. What is it with Saiyan and their exaggerated widow's peak? Wonder how that would feel like. Daddy, daddy, that man has a tail like us. Bulla was pulling on Goku's pant leg after jumping out of Bomber's arms. Everyone followed her finger and saw the brown tail wrapped around the armor like a belt. Raditz looked down towards the little squeal that he heard and spotted a blue-haired child with a tail of her own swinging back and forth. He was startled before switching to anger on the spot. I see how it is. You are frolicking with the alien natives, is that it? Well, I wouldn't blame you. They do look madly similar to us. You should see what Vegeta does on alien planets. He would invade this place in an instant. Raditz had a look of understanding at Goku's situation. But at the same time, everyone could not follow a word he was saying. So you are a Saiyan, ain't ya? And here I thought they were all but extinct. Didn't think that we would meet another so soon. Master Roshi tried to placet the situation. Everyone here heard what was said about the Saiyan race in the book. A pack of cold-blooded killers that conquer whatever they can with carnage. Ah, I have been so distracted about this world that I forgot that you didn't do your mission, Kakarot. Have you gone senile since coming to this planet? I know you are a Saiyan, but who are you? Who am I? You know about Saiyans, so surely you know who I am. Goku shook his head in response. Honestly, even with his otherworldly knowledge, knowing you wasn't really a priority. Well, let me inform you that I am your brother, and I am the strongest Saiyan currently alive. Wait, hold on one second. Yes, yes, no, no, no. I wasn't saying anything bad about you. I'm talking with my brother, come on man, okay, okay. The scouter on Raditz's ear beeped before a transmission was sent to him. From Raditz's reaction and pale face, 
It wasn't going well. He pressed the button on his scouter and slumped down in defeat. Then he remembered that he was supposed to rope his little brother to their cause. Okay, maybe not the strongest. But I am the second strongest Saiyan alive. Beep her, third strongest dash beep, F fourth dash beep, fifth strongest alive currently. Every time he tried, he got shut down immediately. By the time that he said fifth strongest alive, he sounded so defeated that it wasn't even funny anymore. Wait, did he say five? Join us to conquer the universe, Kakarot. With you around, a team will be like the strike teams of the old, and we will take planet by planet. Think of everything you can achieve by joining me. I'll pass. Great. Now let us kill these rodents and wait, did you just say no? Yes. Yes. As in you want to come with me or yes, as in you said no. Look Raditz, if you are my brother, why would I want to come with you? You know how embarrassed I will be in front of team members if you were my brother. Older than me but still the weakest link. I will have no reputation. Goku was taking everything one step at a time. His brain improved so much that he was able to banter with Raditz. While still be thinking about other stuff at the same time. Five Saiyans. What could have happened? There is no way that the stuff happening here on Earth was able to change something from happening. That allowed two new Saiyans to randomly appear. Maybe it could be Turtles, even Broly or Paragus. Something or someone brought them in this new timeline. But who? You think you are stronger than me. Don't make me laugh with your measly power level of 500. I doubt you could even scratch me. No, I won't scratch you. In fact, you wouldn't even know how you got down. Then let's fight right now. Raditz power up to his full power, creating a gust of wind originating from him. Grass parted for him, but no one was surprised or scared of the sudden power burst. Even the weak ones were shielded easily by their allies. Let's move somewhere else dash. Raditz broke dirt and landed a clean punch on Goku's face. It was like hitting an immovable brick wall. His pain receptors were firing off, but Raditz ignored them and pressed further. A kick sweeping towards Goku's chest, followed by a turn around back fist punch and lastly a kick upwards on the chin. Everything barely missed by a hair's width, making Goku fly towards the sky at the end of Raditz's combo. How are you so strong? What did they feed you? Raditz followed in pursuit with both hands glowing purple. Double Sunday. An alien called out a day of the week that represented a spurling purple beam. The two beams weren't even worth using energy on as he took them head on. The blast resembled a firework going off sulfur rain down into the ocean. That's right. Strongest Saiyan still got it. Not quite. Goku didn't mean to interrupt Raditz like dance. But he really didn't need to watch it any longer. His strongest attack neutralized without even doing anything. He dropped down in defeat landing too close to the others for any comfort. Everyone's suspicions came into fruition as Raditz snatched Buller and Gohan, before they could dash off and hide behind some people. This is your last chance, Kakarot. I have your little critters right here, so if you don't join us, I will make them wish death. Before anyone could intervene, Buller twisted in the shirt that she was being held by and bit on Raditz's hand. He nearly dropped her from the extreme pain, but was able to remain stead. Gohan, who was grabbed by the tail, swung himself over and poked both of his uncle's eyes in a good old scissors fashion. Don't kidnap me, perverted uncle. Not being able to take it anymore, he retracted his arms and rubbed his eyes from the irritation. Buller ran behind Bomber shortly followed by Gohan. By the time Raditz was able to open his eyes, he looked up and saw Goku's soulless eyes roaming his entire body like he was a prey waiting to be jumped. Oh shit Dash Raditz woke up to what he thought was a dream. They were sitting inside talking to each other and enjoying the lunch that was cooked. The kids were playing and adults were talking. It was almost like a nightmare to the battle-hungry Saiyan. Shem M H M M M H M M M. Ah, you're awake. Sorry, I had to tie you up. We put a gag on you. Sorry about that too. But we had to do it for the plan to work. Chichi apologized to him and helped him sit up from his fetal position on the floor. Then she removed the gag and allowed him to speak. Kakarot, what are you doing if you don't release me? Vegeta will come and save me. I am a very important asset to their team. Wait, where is my scouter? He didn't feel anything in his ear and frantically looked around for his tech. He found it by the kids on the table with the back panels and some cables leaking out. Oh, your scouter. I heard so much about it, but finally able to research the real thing is tremendous. Bulma talked this time, 
With her extensive knowledge from Goku's spaceship and the Saiyan book, knowing how the Scouter worked was a piece of cake. Vegeta. Vegeta help me please Dash. He was pleading for help until the gag was forcibly placed back into his mouth by Goku. Goku made the shushing motion and signaled Bulma to turn on the Scouter. It took a couple of seconds before a voice came through the small device. Raditz, do you read me? What is going on? Tell me right now or I swear to God I will kill you right now. A sound of a gruff voice came over. It was time for a little play. Oh, brother I get what you are saying now. That Vegeta character seems like such a loser. Who is that? Is that Kakarot he is a midget in size and strength. Seems like the Prince of Saiyan is a joke. Too far. Raditz tried so hard to use his powers to struggle free. However, the rope was made out of Kai from Goku's original move, making it impossible to break out of with his current power level. Even the gag was infused with Kai not allowing Raditz to break it with anything. They didn't really have the best item to gag him within the Kame house. So they settled with the next best thing. Master Roshi's used sock. A little crusty from stains. But it works nonetheless. This is the last straw. I am going to tear you a new one when I find you. Raditz was on the floor weeping. Stuck between certain death and apparently the psychopath that is his brother. I bet everything about him small then. Bet people don't even notice when he is there. That's it. I am coming right now and I am going to kill you. Nappa ready the pods right now. And the voice call got cut out cementing the plan to lure them to come over here. Shichi removed the gag allowing Raditz to catch he breathe after all his muffled shouting. Why? Why why did you do that? Do you want us all to die? Goku smiled in response. All Saiyans need to be here right now. He needed to confirm the identity of the two unknown Saiyans and have them here without them knowing about the Dragon Balls. We have been lied to, or at least you have been. Reaching behind his back, he pulled out a book and placed it in front of Raditz's face. It's time for you to learn, brother. W, where did you obtain this Kakarot? This information could revive our race to the fullest. Raditz shouted in excitement. His hands were trembling as he read the copied version of Saiyans in a nutshell, written by the famous author Shen Long himself. Goku didn't trust him fully yet. So he had the book copied and redacted the transformation section of the book. He needs Raditz to convert before sensitive information like that is leaked. It went from one of excitement to pure fury, as he read the downfall of Saiyans. He banged his fist on the table like a seasoned reader would when one of their favorite characters dies. That bastard Frieza. He told us that a meteor destroyed planet Vegeta. I should have known that it was too much of a coincidence that they all died when they were called over. I I need to tell Vegeta Raditz left the book on the table and rushed to contact his leader with the scouter. He was stopped by a palm on his chest. It was forceful but had no ill intent laced within. Stop. We cannot tell the other Saiyans about this yet. What are you talking about? This is vital information that they need to know right now. If you do not let me you are a traitor of your own race. We need to destroy that freezer before he sees us coming. Raditz's face was twisted with frustration and hate. Everyone he knew was on that planet, and he has been serving the one who caused it all. He would rather die than grovel again. If those Saiyans are the same as you, then even more of a reason to not tell them. If you tell them now, they would only switch their destination to Freezer and try to fight him and die. And that is if they even believe you. We need them to come here and talk about the plan to deal with Freezer. Raditz calmed down a bit from Goku's logic. More and more he saw their father in him. But he ignored it and went back to the table to read the rest of the book. Goku was broken from his deep thought when Gohan was placed on one shoulder and Bulla on the other. The girls showed their concerns by hugging his arms to show him that they were with him. In the background, Krillin was chewing on his shirt with jealously written everywhere. He was sobbing profusely getting it on Yancha's shoe that was beside him. It's not fair. I didn't realize how lucky he was until now. Damn that Goku having girls all over him. I want a girlfriend. Ha 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 Yamcha rubbed the back of his neck in awkwardness. Ran Fan, who came in later, was staring at him challenging him to say something. It's not all good Krillin save yourself. What on Vegeta are you doing? Raditz saw Goku coming out of the gravity chamber dripping wet. He assumed he was training. But what could possibly push him so far that it would make him sweat? It has been one week since Raditz arrived, and he has been living in a small house that they place near Capsule Corporation. Ever since he got here, he has been exposed to Goku's enormous feral power. Someone about it seemed so raw and unbridled. By being exposed to his power, 
he lost all resistance and decided to keep his head low. So far, this planet has been so peaceful and calm, making Raditz feel uncomfortable as ever. Since all he has known all his life is violence. With Goku's watchful eye, he has been warned that even with blood relations, he would not hesitate to kill him, if he threatened the people around him. Oh, this. Yeah, I guess I haven't told you about this place yet. This is where I train. My wife Bomber made it. It's named the Gravity Chamber. Raditz stepped inside the chamber and looked around curiously. He saw a panel on the left and headed towards it. On the display that it showed, it had the word normal. Next to it, there was a keypad ambiguously staring at him. He pressed the 2 button and the words normal changed to 2x. He pressed enter and felt the environment shift around him. He felt twice as heavier as before, and his movement was slightly slower than before. I see, this doohickey changes the gravity in this room to whatever I choose. Ha huh, ha, huh. this is but no matter. I lived during the time of planet Vegeta as a child, and experienced that it is 10x heavier than Earth. Considering my strength, I bet I could even double that. Raditz grinned evilly and looked at the panel, as the only reason Kakarot got stronger than him. He keyed in 20 and pressed enter. Instantly and not surprisingly, his entire body slammed face first onto the floor unable to move. Oh, brother, dad, dad, dad. Buller and Gohan ran up to Goku and tackled him onto the ground. With a set schedule, it was easy to know when their father was done with his training and got the first jump on him. We want to train with you. Mommy and auntie have been forcing us to study all day. They held onto him tight as if they just experienced the worst torture available. Math? He? Hey kids, let me up your uncle has got him into some trouble. I need to help him. They both got off and looked into the open gravity chamber room. They saw their uncle's head digging into him like it was out for revenge. Laughing erupted from the two small children and kept going even when Goku entered the room and turned off the multiplied gravity. Standing up as fast they have seen someone stand up in their life, they continued relentlessly by pointing at him. You little rascals. Raditz ran up to the little shits full of anger. They saw him coming and split down the hallways to lose him. He gave chase as they yelled across the house making quite the disturbance. What happened? I sensed a disturbance in the force. Goku was standing behind a gentleman that was sitting atop a huge rock in the middle of nowhere. Okay Obi, want to hear the news while facing away from me? Giving him no time to respond, he continued his dialogue. A new player in the game. He is also a Saiyan, my brother. He came from space but he is staying with us for now. There was a slight shift in his demeanor as his rival talked about aliens. That's it? That is all that happened? Well, from what he told me, there is an evil tyrant out in space that eradicated my race. He is apparently the emperor of the cosmos. When the remaining Saiyans arrive, we are going into space to take revenge. So what? What does anything have to do with me? If you came out here to warn me not to take over the earth while you are gone, then I make no promises. Who wouldn't pick at food while the scarecrow goes away? I want you to come with me, Piccolo. Piccolo finally turned his head and looked at Goku with only his left side showing. Don't trust me, eh? I wouldn't either. You will have to force me to board that ship with you. He had no power in this strange relationship of theirs. All bark no bite. We can find out more about your race, where you are from. Piccolo finally turned around fully to face the shit-filled liar that is Son Goku. What did you say? More about my race. I am a demon. One of a kind. Do you think I came from space? Even if I did, how would we even find it in the vastness of space travel? Agitated as Piccolo was, Goku pressed on. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I've talked to my brother and he knows your race. Come with me and once we get information about where it is from Frieza, we can visit there if you like to. You don't have to decide now. I'll contact you later in the year and see your response. Here, I got the latest one for you. It goes up to 80x with that Goku was done with the conversation. He tossed a new and improved gravity belt to the young Namkian. He was about to take off before he heard Piccolo call him out. What is your goal? Helping me get stronger through the years. For such a simple question, one would expect a simple answer. Instead, all he got was a shrug to his name. Dust flew with him as he headed towards his home, leaving Piccolo to think all for himself. 
You are a weird one, Son Goku. I absolutely cannot do that Goku. Please. I need to get stronger. Training my body is not enough. You got to know how to get more techniques and stronger with Kai. Goku was practically on the ground groveling at the old god like a beggar. Well, I know one way. But I am not sure if it will work. I might even lose my godhood if something goes wrong. Kami regretted letting in for even a little bit. One look at Goku's big monkey eyes made him concede it instantly. Let me tell you that it will be a long and arduous journey. And you will be gone from your loved ones for a long time. Do you still want to go? Yes. I will Goku left Kami's lookout and went back home. He spent one last long night with his wives and kiss them goodnight before getting ready to leave. You going to be gone for less than a year to train. Just for those saying guys. I thought you said you would take care of them. Stay here with us. Chichi didn't want Goku to go again. She thought that once Goku became a father, he wouldn't do those multiple year trips to hone himself anymore, and do it near them from now on. So far so true until now that is. Hercolo wouldn't know that he left, and even if he did, once he comes back, his neck would be ripped off if he tried to rule the world. The same with Raditz, except with him, Goku put a lock on the gravity chamber, only letting Bulma open it. If he wanted to train, he would have to basically be Bulma and Chichi's slave until he comes back. I will get a lot stronger. Who knows what might happen. I promise I will be back before the Saiyans come. He then leaned to give Bulma her kiss. When she also asked a question, where are you going? I am going to King Kai's, please allow this to happen. Vicious Saiyans are coming to my planet, and he needs all the help he can get. I don't know this doesn't happen often. A giant red man was towering over the two from his equally large desk. On the desk, you would find what you would normally find on a normal office desk. He was looking quite annoyed at the situation before him. Goku, eh? Well, he has enough deeds to go to the upper world already. That is if he were dead. Going to see King Kai and exploring the other world while he is alive. You can see why I am having trouble accepting his passage. Well, uh, you are alive, right? King Kai is alive as well. He won't be interfering with the dead or anything like that. So you don't have to worry. Kami was getting a little antsy. Just one word, and his godhood could be revoked like a gym membership. Yeah, well, I don't think so. Go back dash before he could tell the two to scram. The oversized phone on his desk rang. He picked it up and instantly went to a respectful tone. After a few minutes, he put the phone back and went to address Goku. Alright, you can go in. Don't do anything stupid or you will be sent straight back. Kami didn't question what the phone call was and went straight to thanking Yama for his generosity. Leaving Goku to his own devices, he went back to Earth to oversee the situation. A guide stepped forward and lead Goku to the beginning of the snake. This is Snake Road. The legend says it's about a million kilometers. Good luck. Okay, I am taking off. Come to think about, all I have been doing was training. I have never gotten to really test out my power until now. The poor guide was confused when he heard that. Goku adjusts himself like a runner would do before a marathon, and in a blink of an eye, disappeared from sight. Before he could question if he was seeing things, he was nearly blown off by the winds that generated from Goku's departure. Ah, Goku ignored the man's peril, knowing that he will be alright and focused on flying. Feeling the wind blast on his face, it was liberating and thrilling. Most importantly, it was fast. The road beneath him was disappearing as fast as he saw it. With this kind of speed, he will be there in no time. Please sister-in-law, let me use the gravity chamber. I beg you. Raditz, after just a day in Capsule Corporation without his brother, learned his place when he demanded to use the gravity chamber. Looking at everyone through a hierarchy of power does that to you when you interact with normal people. Not until you apologize to me by taking care of Buller and Gohan. While me and Chichi go shopping, Bulma didn't really mind what Raditz did earlier. But she sure as well capitalizes on it with the leverage she has in her pocket. Who wouldn't want an on-site babysitter? You mean those demons I would rather face Vegeta's wrath than their machinations? Last time they pranked me, my beautiful hair was nearly chopped in half. Vertically, when Bulma and Chichi looked at their children, they looked as innocent as can be. Of course, they can't hide anything from their moms. But the moms sure can pretend. All, oh, look at them. Do you really think they can hurt the big bad uncle? Anyways, we will be back by 7pm. And don't let them eat too much junk food. Tata, 
The door slammed shut. Raditz ran up to it, but it was locked tightly. Heaven forbid he force it open and face another penalty. The next thing he knows, a bag was dropped over his face obscuring his vision. Gohan, grab the paint. I can hold him. Don't you dare you little shits. How are you so strong? What do they feed you? He was not wrong. Not wrong at all. The flight was fast, easy, and efficient. It only took him an hour with his current power. And he felt quite proud of this achievement. Arriving at the tail, he looked up to see a small planet in the sky. He leaped up towards it, and when he got close, got sucked in from its gravity. He landed gracefully and started to look around. Hello, King Kai. Goku arrived at the door to the house and knocked on it. After a couple of more seconds, the door opened with a short monkey standing in front of him. They stared at each other for a few seconds, before some noise in the back of the house started to make itself heard. Who is it Bubbles? I am still in my morning bubble bath. EFFT. The now identified Bubbles answered with the typical monkey sounds. Some laughter even started to come to Goku's ears. Backing away from the door, he started to look more around the vicinity to wait for the Kai. As he was inspecting the car in the driveway, the door opened to reveal a short, fat alien looking man. He had antennas and shades to complete the look. Who goes there? The person shouted tiredly. Goku went up to him and bowed to show respect before introducing himself. My name is Sun Goku. I come to seek martial art techniques from you, King Kai. Wait you are that Goku. I thought I told that brat Yama to bring you in an hour ago. How are you already here? I uh, am pretty fast. Hum I see. You probably have a technique of some sort to go faster. Anyhow, I heard your situation, Saiyans, huh? Sounds like someone doesn't like their greens. EFFT. Yes, they are coming. I want to learn martial arts techniques in order to better combat them, and face the danger that is greater than theirs if it ever appears. You can't give the other party any reason to suspect that you know the future in great detail. Any implication of that could lead to a god coming for me. Giving a broader blanket will cover any mistakes or questions that arise in the future. Martial art techniques. I have a few. I wonder if you will be able to learn them. Will you wait is that a tale I thought you were scheduled for the upper world after death. King Kai just noticed the tale wrapped around Goku like a belt. A Saiyan on his land is the meaning of death. Ah uh, yes, I am a Saiyan. I was hit in the head as a kid. Oh that's why you have no sense of humor. An awkward silence ensued after that for a short period of time. I will teach you if you fix your sense of humor and tell me a joke that will make me laugh. Good luck. I watched through an entire Amy Schumer skit, and didn't break a peep at all the creative and original jokes. The basis of making someone laugh on the spot is to always go for a basic joke. Nothing elaborate or the need to know something beforehand. Something unpredictable to hit you from left field. Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? Why? Because he didn't have the guts to do it. An original was always a good one. King Kai looked visibly stunned and was speechless for a while. He started mumbling wordlessly. Skeleton road guts. He was struggling to hold in his laugh. Snorts were leaking out of his hand-covered mouth. Not surprisingly, he burst out laughing uncontrollably. Mission success. E, that was good, you are a master of comedy. You wouldn't mind if I stole that, would you? Nah, everyone does that nowadays. Okay, so let us start with your training. Since I see that you are responding fine to the gravity of this planet, and you only ask for technique training, I have two I can pass down to you. Any questions? Yes, I do. I have been actually wanting to master a certain thing, and I was hoping you have some insight to help me. Six months later, hey, I am back. What has been going on lately? Goku stepped in the front door of Capsule Core after an intense training half-year training regime. Daddy. Both of his children ran up to him and hugged him. Little did he expect that his brother also came running when he arrived. Kakarot. You are finally back please save me. It feels like I am their lackey just like when it was in Vegeta's group. I thought I was away from this nightmare. Goku put a hand on his brother's shoulder and gave him the unfortunate truth. You are not going to be someone's lackey. After that, he pushed him away as he stood there stunned that his own brother told him that. At least I am not Yamcha's level. Goku went into the main room with both kids latched onto each of his legs. He sat down on the couch as both of his wives were beside him asking about how the trip went. It was great. 
I learned a lot of good stuff. I came back earlier than expected because King Kai's planet was too small for me to finish my last technique. Anyways, there is around half a year until the Saiyans come. I want to do something really special that will surprise them. After he finished saying that, he looked at the two kids on his legs and had a shit-eating grin on him. Everyone in the room had an eerie feeling that it wasn't going to be a good surprise. Four flaming balls appeared in the sky out of nowhere and hold towards the inner city. The howling sound of a meteor alerted everyone before it crashed uplifting debris everywhere. The civilians barely were able to get out of the way and prevent any serious injury. The crowd gathered around the four craters discussing what it could possibly be. An attack bombs and missiles from those soviets magic wizards in an epic dual crash landed here aliens it's the end of the world as we know it one outlandish claim triumphs the one previous and it went on for a while all the commotion stopped when the door of the sphere burst opened revealing a person inside his flame-like hair flowed through the wind as he looked around at the vermin that surrounded him Gem ph a decent planet littered with trash flying up he looked down with contempt his allies also left their pods and met up with Vegeta. There is a high battle power not far from here. One of 10,000. Not too bad for a low-class Saiyan like Kakarot. At the sound of Kakarot, Vegeta's forehead had a small vein spurt out of nowhere. The girl beside him that reported the battle power snickered at the short man's seething anger. Short objectively speaking of course since she was around the same height as him. Let's go there this instant. I want to see this traitorous Kakarot for myself and show him what the power of Saiyan royalty truly is. Vegeta took off in that direction instantly. The three others just looked at each other before taking off to join him. Four power levels were approaching him and fast. He asked all the others to stay out of this racial feud. By turning down their power levels, he was getting anxious feeling not knowing who these two new Saiyans were. From their power levels that he was able to detect. The two new power levels were in the middle of the pack, fairly stronger than the last and fairly weaker than the first who was rocketing towards him at mark speed. Raditz was beside him waiting as well. Gohan and Buller were in the distance looking over at the fight like it was a picnic. Vegeta came first like a fiery missile to their location. When he arrived, he was even more infuriated when Goku and Raditz were just waiting for him to show up. So you are Kakarot the low-class Saiyan. I will show you what will happen when you insult the prince of all Saiyans. Vegeta was flying at him like a raging bull. Raditz took a step back but realized he didn't need to when Vegeta's fist was stopped with Goku's hand. Impossible. A Saiyan elite like myself unable blocked by a simple grab from trash like you. Vegeta pulled his fist back and jumped away. He felt no resistance from Goku, and when he turned to look at him, he still has the same calm expression. Vegeta was now sweating bullets and have Goku a fierce expression. We have been tricked to come here. His only option was to wait until his subordinates arrived to make the situation more towards their favor. You are quite strong Kakarot, unexpected coming from a pod baby. How did you grow so strong? Why do you want us Saiyans here? Stalling the play by asking some questions. It will also give him some insight as to why Goku obviously provoked him here. You figured out that I wanted you here for a reason, as expected from the ruler of all Saiyans. I will tell you after some introductions. Vegeta was feeling more uncomfortable by the second. Thankfully, the others came right on schedule. One after another they landed next to Vegeta. Shock could not describe what he was feeling when he saw the two girls that accompanied the tall bald man. They were people that physically could not be in this universe, people that should be either babies or not born yet. Cauliflower that man is looking at us weird. The slightly taller one with a pineapple hair looked towards the shorter one with worry. Jam PH? That is probably Kakarot. Pervert probably has never been with a woman like his brother Raditz. Ha ha ha. Raditz, you traitorous bastard. I finally have a reason to kill you after all these years. And you are damn sure that I will. The tallest one of the group, Nappa, stepped forward ignorantly to approach Raditz. Nappa stop. Like a well-trained dog, Nappa stopped in his steps. All three of his Saiyans looked at him strangely. He didn't explain why and motioned for Nappa to come back. Before he can, however, Goku interrupted him. It's alright Vegeta, Raditz would actually like to fight Nappa alone. Vegeta knew something was going on behind the scenes. The most likely scenario is that Goku trained Raditz similar to himself. This means that Nappa was going to lose. But it would give him some insight on what kind he has gone through. 
and how much he has grown because of it. Ha <laughs> ha. It looks like your brother wants to give you a quick death. You have always been beneath me, and now you will be forever beneath me when I bury you in the ground. A big bad bully. That is what Nappa was to Raditz. Since the day he was assigned to be with him and Vegeta to the day that came to seek Goku. Always living in fear of dying and finally... He felt liberated. Ha! Raditz had fury in his eyes as he rushed towards Nappa. Underestimating his enemy, as usual, Nappa just stood there, menacingly. Go, Uncle Raditz. Everyone finally took notice of the two hybrids on the other hill. Their tails caught the attention of the prince making him sweat even more. The sudden intake of pain was surely a surprise. Flying through the air, he stabilized himself and saw Raditz following up his attack. He punched back with his hand coated in Kai. But all he punched was air. Raditz flew behind him incredibly fast. And closed his fist to hammer him back to the ground. Wow. Are you sure this is the useless Raditz that we know? His power level is close to mine. Nappa you weakling. Do yourself a favor and renounce your Saiyan heritage. If you are going to lose to a low class like Raditz. What drugs did this guy take? Shut up you infuriating slut. I will show you woman that I am worthy of being Vegeta's right hand man. Wait, wait Raditz. Nappa emerged from the ground by crawling. He was extremely frightened at the enormous strength that his little partner suddenly gotten. Flashback. Ha ha ha. This is too funny. Nappa was laughing heartily. He was watching his partner getting beat up by a small green germ. The Cyberman ran up and tackled Raditz to the ground and left him with a black eye. He got off and ran back towards Nappa. Ah. He was dizzy and got back up. He looked at Nappa resentfully. But when their eyes met he shrunk back. Gem PH. Nappa took out more seeds from his pocket. Planting then watering them, three more Cybermen grew from the ground. Go get him. Raditz landed near Goku and planned to finish Nappa off. He put both his hands up and purple light started to emit from them. Double Sunday. Two beams of light with spirals came rushing towards Nappa at record speed. He didn't have enough time to dodge so he could only block. A fume of smoke came Nappa's location until he was sent flying back. Landing right before Vegeta, he had burn marks all over him from the blast. Coughing a little bit, he opened his eyes and looked up towards Vegeta. Raditz is too strong. Please help me Vegeta. Vegeta didn't even look at Nappa, but straight at Raditz. His growth was too astonishing. And he was trying to decipher how he could have possibly gotten this strong. Finally looking down at his own general. He scoffed at the weakness and uselessness of him. He and the girls were on the elite class. And he was a middle class. Now beaten by the weakest of the bunch. The disappointment was immeasurable. Reaching out his hand, he assured Nappa that he was a benevolent leader. That was until he was thrown in the air. Everyone knew what was coming and frankly, no one cared. You live the life of a dog biting every dog smaller than you. You will eventually provoke the wrong one. And no one will care. I have no need for weaklings like you. There was no need for grandeur as all he needed to finish off the Saiyan was a Kai Blast. Goku did nothing to stop it or have a change in emotion. Vegeta is evil, but with his intelligence and emotion, he was able to change his outlook in life. From all he knew of Nappa, all he cared about was the thrill of the fight and torture. He was brainless and ruthless. He did not care if he survived or not. Raditz was on a high, obliterating Nappa was incredible for his self-confidence. The way he thrashed the big man around, he felt like he could beat Vegeta no problem. Come at me Vegeta, I will show you true hell. He was able to rush off into battle once more until Goku stopped him. Brother, you have improved a lot with training your body and learning Kai, but you can't face him. His excitement was popped like a balloon and was able to protest until he saw the look in Goku's eyes. It was saying that he wasn't weak, but not strong enough. Goku has been training his brother in gravity and learning about the wonders of Kai. He however noticed a very important detail that affects his training. Although he had the motivation and drive, his innate talent was nowhere near Goku's or Vegeta's. It took him longer to endure higher gravity, and harder for him to learn techniques. His growth was improving by leaps and bounds no doubt, but Goku and Vegeta's talent are through the roof compared to normal Saiyans. Getting called back by your little brother. Too scared to face someone actually strong. You have gone lower than I thought Raditz despite your power boost. Caulifla mocked Raditz relentlessly. She never really toyed around with Raditz as Nappa did. 
she mostly mocked anyone she could, even Vegeta. With her near prodigal talent, she was the only one able to keep up with Vegeta. Shut up. My brother is stronger than all of you combined. With his help, I was able to have my revenge on you. Kakarot, surely I can match Kalifla. Rolling his eyes at his brother's battle-hungry side, he gently pushed him and gestured to the kids. He conceded and went to sit with the kids who had popcorn in their hands. Vegeta stepped forward and without saying anything, he motioned for the girls to also leave the scene, so he could fight. He might have blocked his punch earlier, but surely he isn't that much stronger than him. As transparent as a window, Vegeta's thoughts escaped towards everyone there. They were Saiyans, rough and tough, but they were also girls wanting to enjoy a battle between two powerhouses. The picnic blanket was large enough for the girls to join, and they did when the cute little kids waved them down. Better than standing or sitting in the sand, Kalifla could not stand kids. So she sat at the very edge of the blanket, while Kale sat next to her and Gohan. Gohan was extremely friendly to everyone he meets only being mischievous with Bulla sometimes. He handed Kale a bucket of popcorn, and she looked at it curiously. She popped one in her mouth, and stars started to shine in her eyes. Thanking the little man, she started chowing down. Hey Kale, what is that? Is it that good? Looking like a chipmunk, she gave Kalifa some as well. Taking some, she also loved the buttery taste, and they both looked like they were watching a movie. This is my only move, he is a low-class Saiyan. So surely he hasn't trained his mind in that form. It will equal the playing field. Conjuring a small round power ball in his hand, he sent it flying behind the spectators, so that they wouldn't transform. It would be a 4v3 if that happened, and he didn't want to risk to see if those kids were monsters either. Transforming into the ape form, everything was bigger and better than before. Hair was everywhere, but also covered by his stretched armor. The only way for his opponent to win was to also transform, but lose his sanity in the process. Genius. Well, technically, he didn't need to transform to beat the giant ape before him, but he looked at the moon to humor him. Vegeta expected a giant ape versus giant ape, not whatever was happening right now. Brown hair started to grow all over his body from his legs to his torso. His actual hair elongated as well wrapping around his head and neck like a pillow. The shirt that he was wearing ripped like usual showing off his hairy chest and muscles. His pants were of a light blue with a nice red belt, accenting his brown fur. Everyone was stunned, even the kids and rabbits. This was their first time seeing such an absurd transformation as well. Great power was emanating from Goku, one that was on par with Vegeta's transformation, but more compact and intense. Oh, you what is that? What a why you? Vegeta had a pre-motion of what he had just become, and he didn't like it one bit. As royalty, learning history was a reluctant objective he had to go through, and what Goku was right now is incredibly similar to what he had heard in the legends. This is a result of perfectly controlling my great ape form and transforming it into something new. Its name in its traditional sense is the perfect ape form, but I like to call this the primal transformation. The reaction of everyone on the picnic was priceless, to say the least. This cannot be. His worst fears have come true. He has been ascended and left behind in the dust. His enormous fist came raining down on Goku. It was the size of his entire body. In response, However, he just lifted his palm and stopped the momentum. Raditz was watching his brother achieve the impossible, and outweighing the prince, respect could only go up. The children, Bulo and Gohan, admiration of their father, went through the roof after seeing all the hard work that he has put through himself, and them in action. As for the two newcomers, Kalifla was drooling. Did I see that right? Kel felt the tides changing, and what a huge tide it was. She was still reaching for the popcorn enjoying the show when she realized that Kalifla's hand was inside the bucket without doing anything. It was then when Kale noticed Kalifla looking at Goku with drool coming out of her mouth, not controlling her own feelings too well. Instead of looking at Goku impressed, she gave him a death stare that could melt any person. That confident smirk did not deceive her at the slightest. You cannot win Vegeta, give up now. Pride was a big part of Vegeta, but also one of the reasons why he is always doing things for his own self-interest. The reason why he is always on the edge of being a good person. Never. You will go down and kneel beneath me. Such a huge blow to his ego, he would naturally deny it. 
A machine gun style of punches tried its hardest to knock or even move the unperturbed Goku. The primal ape sighed and decided to end the match fast for everyone involved. One well-timed uppercut caught the enraged monkey off his feet. The red in his eyes symbolizing rage slowly turned white as he slowly shrunk back to his original size. Raditz came down to help him up, and Goku motioned for everyone to follow him. They quickly arrived at the turtle house putting Vegeta on the couch. Bulma, Roshi, and Krillin were there and greeted the newcomers. Cauliflower and Kale felt very awkward at the situation as they were enemies just seconds ago. Goku led Cauliflower and Kale, with Bulma following to discuss business while Raditz kept watching over Vegeta. This is the first time I heard that there were more Saiyans and female Saiyans as that. What happened and where were you people? The interrogation quickly turned into Cauliflower being a lovesick puppy, and Kale hatefully added some bits. They had memories of planet Vegeta and living inside of it. It didn't feel like manufactured memories, and Cauliflower still had a brother like in the original. Their story was similar but at the same time altered in a way to fit with the consistencies of this universe. From what Cauliflower could recall, the girl duo was called over to assist Vegeta and stayed with him when the order was called to return to planet Vegeta. From what Goku could gather with all the information that he was given, he felt like for sure that someone or something sentient is at work. His best guess was the Cauliflower and Kale was someone integrated into the timeline like himself by this force. He needed to find out who or what this was, but he knew that he needed to get stronger before diving in too deep. Kale wasn't the only one to notice Cauliflower's starstruck attitude. After seeing Goku in that form, Bulma also took note of it during their conversation. How could you not when Cauliflower would look at Goku constantly? Goku in all his dense nature did not even think of the possibility that the Saiyan girl liked him. Kakarot. Vegeta is awake, it is time to show them. Raditz's voice could be heard from inside the house. They all entered the household to see the Saiyan prince stirring. In the back, Kai Kai and Krillin were entertaining the kids, while Roshi was in the back somewhere. Are you calmed down? Ready to talk about why I asked you here? Vegeta didn't anything and he didn't need to. His face said everything. The first thing Goku did was to give the new scouters that were placed on the table to Bumla to block communication. Reaching to a nearby bookcase, he fished out the copy of the Saiyan book that he had Raditz read on his first visit. Raditz has long read the real book, the copy was only there until they could prove their trustworthiness to him. Cauliflower curiously took the book, and started to flip the pages indiscriminately. She immediately got bored and gave it to Kale. Kale read it for us please, reading is too boring for me. The worst part was that Kale didn't notice that she was displaying similar tendencies Cauliflower that Cauliflower had towards Goku Frieza that bloody bastard. Cauliflower was lying upside down on the couch next to Vegeta, who had his eyes closed listening to the majority of that time. He finally blew his fuse when he heard of everything that Frieza had done to his race. Kale jumped when Vegeta had his outburst, while Cauliflower looked bored as ever, as if she didn't care at all. Vegeta angrily took the book to look over everything that is on it to see if it was credible. What he noticed in the beginning was something that shocked him to his core that Goku slipped in the copy as a bait. It was the table of contents. Where did you get this copy Kakarot? And how does it have so much information? Vegeta went right up to Goku's face. On the table, it clearly stated the eight transformations and more, yet the copy didn't contain the details. Goku pushed Vegeta so he wouldn't have to smell his stinky breath. You don't own me Vegeta remember that. Goku placed that card there to trap Vegeta in multiple ways. One so that he would have to trust the book, as had presumably taught Goku a long lost technique. Two. It would make it so that Vegeta had to keep playing Goku's game be basically controlled by him, if he wanted to learn the technique. And three, as the Prince of Saiyans, his hunger for power and authority will keep on pushing the right buttons. They stared at each other for a while longer, until Goku broke the silence. I am not here to fight or argue. I have a proposition to make. Oh, and what do you have in mind? We take the fight to Frieza, make him atone for his crime at the helm of our boot. Goku was stroking all the right buttons to make Vegeta go forward. And just like that, thoughts of a deceased Frieza overpowered Goku and his transformation. He immediately stormed out with the book and was able to fly off. Headed to your escape pod, of course. I shall be the one to have Frieza grovel. Your strength right now isn't enough. I have a plan for you to grow stronger like Raditz. 
so we have a chance against Frieza. Frankly, Goku was also scared of the enormous power of Frieza. With all of his power multiplication, he calculated that he is able to power Frieza. However, it was really important that he isn't the only one that has the power to protect others. And others having the motivation to do so is crucial. By exploiting Zenkai boots to a limited extent and regular training, he felt he had reached some sort of bottleneck. With the primal form unlocked a few months ago, it felt like his ceiling definitely grew. But he understood that without Super Saiyan, going further with his base form a pipe dream. He needs it soon, and the only feasible solution was to achieve it himself unless a small crowd was surrounding a large ship in the yard of Capsule Corporation. I will be back soon. Do you have everything ready? Goku was talking to Bulma while Vegeta waited near the spaceship. Goku, Vegeta, and Raditz were going to head towards Frieza's spaceship, while Kai Kai peel at the ship. Kai Kai studied the controls and workings of the ship so much that she had as much knowledge as Bulma, the co-creator. Caulifla and Kale were on the side of the ship as well, but they decided not to go. Goku was passing them on the way to the spaceship before Caulifla talked to clarify something. Just so you know, I stayed behind not because you asked me to, but because Kale wanted me to. It's not like your worry of something threatening Earth would actually be true. Kale indeed asked her stay. But and in the typical Sunday fashion, she convinced herself that Kale was the reason she was unable to follow Goku. Goku asked Cauliflower and Kale, because they were going to be extremely strong. Once they trained in the gravity chamber in Cap Corporation, they didn't really care about revenge, and had some bad blood with Vegeta. So there was really no reason for them to come. Besides, better be safe than sorry if an actual threat came to Earth. Just as they were about to close the door to the spaceship, Goku halted Kai Kai, when he saw an approaching figure in the distance. Piccolo, you made it. I knew that you were going to come. The person that came after them was in fact Piccolo. I am just curious about my race. You said after Frieza we would go to Namek, yes. I am only helping you because of that. As it is said in the sowing, curiosity killed the cat. Kai Kai was taking off once Piccolo entered. They were decently high in the air before Goku was able to close the door again. Like before, just as he was about to close it, two small shadows barged in just before it closed. Perfect timing Gohan. Way to go. The two kids were laughing while their dad was under them from their tackle. Wait, guys. Leave the ship, what are you doing dash no matter. What he said, they were already in space. On a one-way lane to freeze a spaceship to wreak havoc. Our pods were destroyed due to unforeseen circumstances. We have taken a spaceship from them after killing them. And are now heading back to base. Vegeta was currently talking to through his scouter to someone in Frieza's spaceship. Understood, come back as quickly as possible for your next mission. The communication team responded with their drone-like response and hung up. ESK he took off the scouter and went to the cockpit of the ship. Bulma had modified the scouters, so that they are able to control certain aspects to have more privacy. Entering the cockpit, he saw everyone already gathered around Chichi the pilot. We were able to lock onto Frieza's spaceship thanks to your coordinates. They are currently moving, but we should be able to catch up within a few weeks. Well, a few weeks. That's boring. I want to fight this guy now. The incredibly serious situation intensity lowered a bit when everyone was reminded that Buller was on the ship. Goku went up to his kids and pinched their cheeks simultaneously. Oh no, you won't be fighting. You will stay on the ship with your mom. No matter how much the kids protested, Goku wouldn't budge an inch. They may be incredibly strong for their age, but one small mistake could lead to their death. Goku turned to look at everyone else that was on the ship. Piccolo, Vegeta, and Raditz for use. Everyone has their own room with training equipment and a small gravity room. This ship functions as a normal house with all the appliances. Be nice to each other around here. He dismissed everyone with that last sentence. But before Piccolo could go, Goku stopped him. Hey, you don't use gravity as much lately. Do you? I noticed that it does not work as effectively on you. Yes, my body is different than you Saiyans. I won't grow stronger just by pressuring my body. Lately, I have been meditating and other activities to grow my strength. Piccolo didn't know how Goku figured out that he hasn't been using gravity. But he knew that he didn't ask for no reason. Perfect. That means you have a lot of free time. I need to ask someone thing of you. Run. That was the only thing that popped into his mind. Just before he could book it, 
Goku reached behind him and scoped the two kids, and shoved them into Piccolo's arms. They can't really be left unsupervised, especially Buller. If you can look after them and even train them a bit, it will be greatly appreciated. Anyways, I will be going to my room. Knock if you need anything. Piccolo blinked in disbelief. However, when he did so, Goku was already nowhere in sight. He put down the kids and went straight to Goku's door and knocked rapidly. There was no response even though Goku encouraged him to knock. Crash looking behind and where the noise was coming from. It was the room labeled Piccolo. The door was wide open for any wandering kid to go in. You bastards better not be doing anything. Back on Earth, Bulma was monitoring the spaceship's systems from inside her lab. She decided to take a break and went into the kitchen. She started to eat some leftovers when she heard a sound coming from the gravity room. Phew, no wonder Kakarot got so much stronger than us. That gravity room is no joke. Kel shyly nodded next to her for obvious reasons. Cauliflower was wearing a sports bra and panties with no shame and showing around her body. Sweat was dripping accenting her abs and glistened her skin. Kale was a little more modest wearing yoga-like pants and a sports crop top. Even with all the cover, the intense workout made her clothes stick closer to her skin, creating her own charm. Bulma whistled at the display, appreciating the show that she was given. The Saiyans girls decided to crash with Bulma because they had nowhere else to go, and there was amazing training equipment there. No other reason. So Bulma. The girls decided to eat before they showered and sat down with Bulma. Bulma looked up from her phone and gave the cauliflower her attention. How long have you known Goku? On the side, Kel rolled her eyes and pouted discreetly after hearing cauliflower antics. On the opposite side of the token, Bulma rolled her eyes in her mind. It was the dragon's wish at work. Oh, Goku, you pulled in another. You will be in for a surprise when you get back. I will prep her for you. After all your happiness is mine as well. We met when I was just a teenager. Bulma told her life full of adventure and turmoil centered around one Saiyan kid. Before nightfall came, she started talking about recent events such as marriage and kids. So you and Chichi are both Goku's wives. That seems strange but normal. Cauliflower fell into deep thought once she got into that issue. Pushing her a little more, she even started talking about her more intimate endeavors. Jealousy flashed through Cauliflower's eyes, while disgust appeared on Kale's. Bulma, she is my enemy. She is helping that blasted Kakarot steal my senpai away from me. That big. The only one is Vegeta's accidentally. And let me tell you I thought all Saiyans guys were the same as his royal handler. They really started to kick off in their conversation. Although Bulma is no battle-hardened veteran, she is no girly girl either. They joked and laugh on various topics, even making Kale join in on the fun, loosening her unease. What they didn't know coming was a meteor-like objected headed to Earth, only a few weeks due time passed by quickly on the ship, with no spectacular view on the outside. They only passed by some planets, but left them in the dust with Capsule Core's advanced spaceship. We are only a few days left until we arrive at Freeze's location. Took us around two weeks of travel until we caught up to him. Seems like he is heading to a small desolate planet. Apparently, according to Galaxy Wiki, rumor has it that someone who had crossed Frieza in the past was last seen there. And he went to confirm it. Looking at the planet through the display, Goku could not help but feel he recognized it. It was on the edge of his tongue. But surely he has never seen a planet like this. Ag, hate it when that happens. The others didn't even bat an eye to the planet, and continued to listen to Chichi's explanation. We should be able to reach him just as he reaches it. The plan is to pretend two on their side and board the main the ship. Then cause chaos from within, kill Freezer, then destroy the ship. I will stay back with the kids to pick you guys up before the ship will go up in the flames. Like an experienced tactician, she laid out the plan while also leaving room, knowing the Saiyan tendencies. Mom, what can we do? Don't tell me we are going to stay on the ship while everyone else has all the fun. Shichi rubbed Gohan's head and assured both the kids. Don't worry, I have a special role for you two alright. We shall meet up here in a few days. Chichi will alert everyone through the intercom when we approach the ship. Although Goku on the outside seemed calm and collected, on the inside he was a little worried. He has been pushing himself to the limit. 
but his strength has been capped with just gravity for now. He had been recently training Raditz and giving a few tips to Vegeta about the primal form in the past few days. Needless to say, with Vegeta's temperament, it will take quite a while for him to reach that form. He has also been keeping the kids company when they annoy Piccolo too much. They have been improving a lot, but as expected, Raditz has been lagging behind and struggling compared to Vegeta. They started out roughly the same, with Vegeta's power a few thousand ahead of Raditz to tens of thousands ahead. Some people are just built differently. Everyone left to do their own thing. Vegeta and Raditz went to train, while Piccolo tried to meditate despite those nagging kids all around him. Goku turned to Chichi and put his hand on her shoulder. Have you been contacting Bulma with the device? Yes. I have, so far, even with being this far away. Her tech is able to still reach, and we talk every day. That's good, do you remember the plan? Shit chi do you really have to leave again? Don't say it like that. I will be gone for less than a year. I just want to visit the planet, and I will come back ASAP. If you say so you seem stressed, my beautiful wife, let me relieve some of it for you. We are just a couple of minutes away, everyone ready. In front of the ship, they could see a faint outline of an enormous ship. Oh, stop yapping woman, we have been through this pesky plan of yours already. I am here just to slaughter. With the new power Vegeta has gained through gravity training, he thought that the sky was the limit. We are here. Their tiny ship saw a fleet of ships floating above a planet. They haven't landed it. But from what it looks like with the entrance of Freeze a ship already open, they have boarded the planet. Halt, this is Emperor Freeze's galactic fleet. State your purpose or be shot down by the ruler of this universe. A signal came through to the ship's interface asking of their purpose. Vegeta pushed a button on the control panel and spoke back. He said a bunch of code and stated his name. The person on the other side eventually confirmed him and let them through. An opening in the underside of the ship was made clear, and Chichi flew towards it. Entering inside, it was revealed to be a hangar of some sort, with various small pods and ships occupying the space. All the manpower however were concentrated in other sections. Due to the sensitive situation they were in, a small purple alien came to greet them. Leaving the ship first, Vegeta was approached by the alien, who also had a clipboard. He saluted Vegeta and gave him a brief rundown. Hello Vegeta, currently the Freezer Force is stationary in an unmarked planet in the Northern Quadrant. Our Lord is in an investigation that our lower ranked soldiers do not know about yet. All the troops are on standby in the main hall. The Jinyu force arrived recently, and with them, Dodoria and Zabin are with Lord Freezer on the planet. I see. So does that mean we are the only ones in the hangar number one right now? Such a weird question. But with all the high-ranked members not in the ship, Vegeta and Kui, who is temporarily in charge, are the strongest. He wouldn't dare dilly-dally in his response when his life is on the line. Yes, only us and those in the hangar control room. There are three hangar rooms filled with ships just like this one. Vegeta walked past the attendant and motioned him to follow. When they both had their backs turned from the ship, Goku, Piccolo, and Raditz left the ship. Alright, go to your positions. They all went separate ways from where Vegeta went, trying to be as quickly as possible. All of them already were briefed of the layout of the ship from Vegeta, and knew where they were heading to. What the? Who are those that came with Vegeta? There were five more aliens, each wearing the signature Freezer armor and scouters. They looked at the cameras in front of them, and saw three unknown characters come out of Vegeta's spaceship. Before they could alert the higher-ups, the door behind them automatically opened for Vegeta. Not wasting any time, he shot five precise Kai shots straight through their brains, killing them in an instant. The purple alien next to Vegeta was shocked. But that didn't last long before Vegeta picked him up by the neck and slammed him on the wall, killing him brutally. He had a smirk on his face as he turned back and went towards the front of the ship. Piccolo went deep inside the spaceship dodging and weaving the cameras and sentries in the away. He didn't have much time to do what he was assigned, especially considering what Raditz was up to. Luckily, all the soldiers were all in the main hall and not in his path, allowing him to get to his destination a lot faster. Entering a highly futuristic mainframe, he killed everyone that was in there and reached for something in his pocket. Grabbing a USB looking thing, he plugged it inside of the closest thing he could in the mainframe. It took some time for him to jam it in there, as it didn't exactly fit the strange hole. 
But once it was in, it started to transform and accustom itself to its holder. With all the alien knowledge and tech stored inside the Saiyan space pods and scouters, Bomber's Tekken made leaps and bounds. Starting from the drive, a very visible web of data collection spread throughout the entire mainframe within seconds. Piccolo patiently waited until he received a signal from his strange watch. Raditz, on the other hand, was going to the back of the ship. Anyone that was in his way was met with a swift death, meaning that he was leaving a trail of blood. Eventually, he made it to the engine room after much ventured and reached into his pocket. Uncovering a capsule, he clicked and threw it in the center of the room. A big container with a timer was revealed and started to count down. It started at two minutes, plenty of time for him to go back to the spaceship where Chichi she was waiting. After sending the signal through a specifically made watch on his wrist, he turned back and backtracked his way through the ship. He didn't get far when a blaring noise and red light started to flash crazily around him. Looking at his watch with displeasure, he saw that Piccolo was already clear, and with his carefulness, he wouldn't trip any alarms. That left Vegeta, the only one who could have tripped an alarm. That hot head, time for plan B Goku made it out of the ship relatively easy. He landed on the rocky, sturdy planet. The sandstorm environment buffeted his face, but it didn't really affect him too much. Floating above the storm, he started to explore the terrain a little. He has already felt Freeze's great Kai from far away, but he needed to know the place where the fight was going to take place. Strangely, there was a section of the planet that hindered his Kai sensing a little. From all the research that they did on planets in this planet, in particular, there was no life on this planet. There were chances for the natural environment of planets to disrupt Kai energy, so he didn't think much of it. The tyrant needed to go down for his sins. But the real reason Goku wanted to fight Freezer is that he is hoping the midget will push him over his limit. Although he knew that he could achieve Super Saiyan if he trained more and more, the slow crawl recently made him really impatient. The back trick doesn't work as intended, Goku presumed that it was from the certain evolutionary path. That the Saiyans from Universe 6 walk through similar to their lack of a tail. Trust me, he tried his hardest to simulate his back muscles. All that effort didn't go to waste, however he pulled the largest fart of his life, and was actually quite proud of it. It was so strong, he even had a gut feeling that it could kill Yancha. But that was more because Yancha is weak than his gas strong. Looking back at the ship, the insides were flashing red, signaling an alarm. Ah, I knew this was going to happen. At the speed of sound, Vegeta rocketed past soldiers leading up to the front of the ship. He played the little games of Kakarot and his mistress in the beginning, but he was getting impatient. Besides, who could order him around? He is the Saiyan Prince. While the others eliminated the people in front of them with discreet etched in their moves, Vegeta was starving for action, and killed people without caring about the sound it caused. This made the alarm sound while he was nearing the main room. Opening the door, he saw a lot of aliens typing away on their consoles, due to the various alarms. In the middle of the room looking through the window, Kui turned around from his leisurely gaze to the door. What was his pleasure feeling a sense of entitlement at the helm of the ship? Vegeta burst his bubble by appearing at the worst time. The crew noticed Vegeta and started to panic. They were about to run out of the room when they felt the tension in the air and were fearing for their lives. Do not run and keep everything under control. He must have accomplices. Order everyone to kill them. Kui stopped everyone and turned to face Vegeta who was giving him a shit-eating grin. You really think that I need Freezer's permission to kill you after you rampage in his ship? I will get a lot of merit by killing you. Prepare yourself, my arch-rival. I will end your life today. The alarms were blaring, and the soldiers in the main hall didn't know why. Everyone in communications was killed, and they all thought that it was the signal to attack the planet they were set out to do. When the doors didn't open to let them out, a voice led them to the right path. Everyone, there is an intruder on the ship. The technicians and mechanics are unresponsive, and there is an unidentified ship in hangar number one. All units engage in this unknown threat until further instruction. Cheers erupted from the evil people and they all went towards their ships. They flooded hangar number one, 
and easily spotted the sore thumb in the room. Blast that Vegeta, Raditz and Piccolo haven't even come back yet. Gohan and Bulla switch to plan B and get to your positions. Chichi started the ship and was able to fly out of the hangar. She weaved over blaster shots that were chasing her as she was rushing towards the exit. With the press of a button, the dual cannons on the side of the ship activated and shot the exit of the ship. Barely scraping through the narrow shots, the exit behind them closed due to safety measures. All the foot soldiers started to run towards their assigned ships in an attempt to pursue them. What they didn't know was that Gohan and Bulla planted a small mine in every ship's underside before they parted. Pressing the large red button, all the soldiers who tried to pilot a ship in hangar number one was encased in the fiery explosion that followed. It may have reduced their numbers by a third, but it didn't slow down the rest as they were chased by hundreds of ships from the other hangars. A massive space fleet started to chase down the lone ship around the desolate planet. Kui's little speech and hide didn't last long when Vegeta looked quite bored picking at his ear. Using a speed that was akin to teleportation to Kui, Vegeta was in front of the unsuspecting alien. Punching him in the gut, Vegeta's fist passed to the other side without any grandeur. But how? We were at the same power level before. Do you really think that I a Saiyan would lose to someone like you? And nobody. You must be delusional. Now let me give Freezer a warning of what's going to come to him. Vegeta lifted Kui after impaling him and threw him against the large window in the front. Ku crashed through the window sailed through the planet. Coincidentally, he landed right in front of a floating emperor who was wondering what was happening to his ship. Frieza looked down at Kui who was struggling to stay alive. It grossed him out a little, so he fired a death beam to end his life. If I recall, Vegeta was scheduled to come today. I knew the day he will try to overthrow me. But I didn't think the royal monkey was actually idiotic enough to do it with his tiny power level. He kills Kui and thinks he is strong. Oh well, it gives me a reason to exterminate the Saiyans anyways. That is if you survive a fight against me. The Jinyu Force freezes retainers, and Frieza himself all squinted through the sandstorm. A lone figure slowly walked out with his hoodie that he donned, revealing himself as Goku, but more importantly a Saiyan. He stood proud and ready to fight to the death. Your midget ass won't be even able to reach me. Just when he said that the spaceship in the space exploded behind Goku in a spectacular explosion. Parts of the spaceship and screams could be barely heard from how far they were. They all looked at Goku and felt the tremendous pressure coming from him. All of their scouters exploded from their face as Goku started to power up. Air pressure blew the Jinyu Force, Dodoria, and Zabin away a few meters. The air didn't seem to affect Frieza, not changing his facial expression from his slight frown. Getting in his fighting position, his blood was boiling in excitement. Let's go Frieza, you impudent monkey. I will crush you and all of your kind once and for all. His ship, his magnificent prize possession that he got from daddy. The men were expendable. But the ship was with him since the day he ruled. Three objects with a trail of smoke covering them originated from the ship was headed in their direction. When the balls of smoke dispersed, Vegeta, Raditz, and Piccolo were revealed. Originally, in their first plan, after Raditz planted the bomb and Piccolo stole the data, they were supposed to head back towards the ship. However, with the alarm being triggered, they burst a hole through the ship instead and landed on the planet waiting to be picked up later. Getting picked up didn't seem like a very plausible solution currently with all of those battle spacecraft chasing Chichi around. The mother-children trio wasn't just going to be chased. However, the guns at the sides of the ship started to move erratically, as if a human suddenly started to man them. Bulla took the left while Gohan took the right. With limited energy in the ship, they substituted their bullets by supplying the weapon with Kai. Missing at first, the children were able to get the hang of shooting the turrets, and started to take down the ships chasing them in a fiery explosion, while Chichi weaved past enemy fire. Freezer and his little hover chair got distracted by the light show above. He was about to raise his finger and shoot down the pesky lone spacecraft, before Goku saw his opening and initiated his attack. His fist decked Frieza right on the cheek caving it in, and blowing the little man chair and all. Unable to control his vehicle, he connected with a mountain fast. The entire hovercraft broke into pieces leaving Frieza on all fours panting. So you are actually in contact with the team in space. With Goku, Wicked Cauliflower and Kale were just lounging around Bulma's lab after training. Bulma would always be in her lab recently, so it made them very curious. Yes, 
I made a prototype communicator, and it seemed like it worked. I am able to receive messages and updates through a similar device I gave Chichi. Currently, they just found Frieza's spaceship and are going in. Goku at this point, Caulifla didn't even hide her concerns towards Goku and his risky situation. With Bomber bombarding her with information and images of Goku, she felt closer than ever. Kale sighed. She knew this day would eventually come where she couldn't keep Caulifla beside her forever. When she lost hope, she decided to just enjoy the time currently until Goku came back. Bulma smiled at Caulifla's day's expression that reminded her of her past self. Reaching over to send another message to Chichi for an update, a voice that wasn't her own, spoke inside of her subconscious. This panicky, whiny voice that was the epitome of weakness echoed inside her mind. Recognizing this immediately as Yancha, even more confusion ensued. Did she finally go crazy? Bulma, Bulma, can you hear me Yancha? Where are you? How can I hear you? I am at King Kai's planet right now. King Kai is sending my voice over to you. Bulma was looking at the sky while talking. Caulifla and Kale backed up from where they were originally and started to question their companion's sanity. Why are you calling me? I thought that you, Krillin, Chen, and Shoutsu went to that guy's place to learn that Kayakan or something. By the way, send your voice if you can to Caulifla and Kale as well. They think I'm crazy. A simple rewiring. And they were also able to hear Yamcha. They wish that it stayed the way it was earlier. It's all that damn midget's fault. He convinced us to catch up to Goku. But that is not important, right? What is really important is that the Earth and everyone on it are in danger. What do you mean you soy boy? We aren't going to destroy the Earth anytime soon. Caulifla thought that now that the Zed fighters are not on Earth, they would think she would proceed to wreck it. Not you, but a seed. A seed of the Tree of Might. Frieza stood struggled to stand up while everyone watched with their mouths hanging open. That was the Emperor of the Universe they were looking at. The strongest being in this universe. He got down with just one punch. Just who is this man that we are facing and is that why he was so afraid of Saiyans and their potential? You dare touch me. Me. I will decimate you and your entire lineage. Behold, you are about to witness my supreme form that no other living being has ever seen before. This was the most power he has ever felt from a singular individual. Goku wasn't an idiot. It wasn't like he was going to let Frieza transform. He wasn't a masochist. Frieza tried to gather his Kai to transform, but Goku came at him like a rocket. Frieza collected his Kai and ducked letting Goku go above him. Releasing his Kai, he had an evil smirk on his face, thinking he obliterated Goku. When the blast ended and Goku didn't appear, he was even more satisfied until he found a fist right in his stomach. You won't get rid of me that easily. With his other hand, he slapped Frieza in the face, making ripples appear from one end to the other. Frieza hit the ground and bounced like a pebble, crashing in a jutted out rock, making it collapse on himself. He emerged from the rocks looking as angry as ever, trying to transform again. Goku did not let him and sped towards him. However, from the peripheral of his vision, he saw a strange purple beam, accompanied by an equally annoying voice. Change. Goku backed away from the blast, and it hit a rock. Everyone awoke from watching Goku and Frieza fight. Piccolo tried to help Goku by aiming a kick towards Jinyu's face. But he was very quickly surrounded by the Jinyu force. Raditz instead had his aim towards the Doria, hoping to take him out fast. The smoke cleared from the release of a seal, and a giant appeared before Goku. That did not fit his color palette at all. Frieza chuckled a bit and was ready to spar it out again with Goku, until he felt a presence behind him. Vegeta came in hot with two Kai blasts on each hand, firing both while also heading towards Frieza. The alien easily sidestepped from the blasts. Vegeta landed and tried his best to take on the eight-foot giant, but he kept on missing with Frieza's strafes. The smirk that he received angered him even more, opening him up to even more mistakes. Jumping up to do an uppercut, all Frieza had to do was tilt his head back. Looking at him while his head was tilted, he swiped his tail launching Vegeta like a ragdoll. Swishing through the air, he landed on the ground creating a crater. Finished with Vegeta, Frieza turned to Goku expecting the same result. That will be you in just a moment once you taste my excellence. No more words were spoken, only action. Frieza's hunking body was unable to keep up with Goku agility, and he was taking punches left and right. Everything wasn't going right for him. 
The weakest Saiyan was about to kill both of his retainers, even with Zarbon transforming. The strange Namekian was taking out one Jinyu Force member at a time, and here he was struggling with a ruse monkey. Fire explosions were also littering the skies as Chichi did barrel rolls after barrel rolls. Gohan and Bulo were mowing down the aerial pursuit by a third, with just their accurate shots. Seeing that momentum going against him and his team, he decided to put out all stops and transform to defeat this Saiyan. A seed of the Tree of Might. What is that and why would we be afraid of some measly seed? You don't get it you ignorant Saiyan. King Kai firmly rejected Caulifla's dismissal of it. The Tree of Might will not only produce fruits that are not supposed to be for the mortals, but it will also suck the entire earth to accomplish it. All of the girl's faces turned white after realizing what he just said. Well, Caulifla and I will just destroy it. Kel said quite adamantly confident in their strength. If it were that easy we would not have called you. By the end of today, the tree will turn the earth into a desert wasteland. Currently, Tien and Krillin are headed your way. But I doubt they would be able to get there in time. Oh, we, we have to try. Let's go Kale and try to destroy that thing. They were running to the exit about to open the door, when a humongous tree root barged its way instead. Seeing all the free room inside the lab, the rouge root cold and drove its way in and occupied the space. It destroyed several lab equipments and even the main console where Bulma was monitoring the situation in space. No, leaving Bulma to fix her own devices. Caulifla and Kale blew away the root, having just enough space to maneuver through. Outside was an apocalyptic situation with fire everywhere and people running for their lives. Roots were everywhere destroying buildings and weaseling its way into every nook and cranny. In the far distance, they saw a tall and lush tree proudly standing. It was so big that they would see it from hundreds of miles away. Shi Dash trying his hardest to transform once again. Goku left him no openings to exploit with how much stronger he was than him. A clean hit on the shoulder left his left arm paralyzed. Another hit on the knee brought the tyrant to his knees. Using his own knees, he connected it with Freeze's face making him whiplash and fall on the ground. It's over. He was about to blast this alien into smithereens until he felt another presence behind him. Taking a look back, he saw Raditz's face with bruises and blood in between. The entire Jinyu force was out for the count, even Jinyu laid there beaten. The retainers were also down for the count with Piccolo resting a bit. Turning back, he was about to finish Freezer off. He was stopped when Raditz put his arm under Goku's and put him in a headlock. Raditz. Wait Dash realizing the situation a little too late, he easily broke free from the restraint and tried his hardest to destroy Frieza. He was too late however and Frieza was already transforming. Breaking out of the Kai Cocoon, a person as small as his first formed appeared with nearly all white covering him except a few purples. He skipped to the final stage. I think I should be able to handle him. Brushing off Jinyu that was in Raditz's body, Piccolo came over to pick him up after he killed the other two pests. Jinyu switched right in front of the Nankian but he didn't notice anything changing. Now let the games begin. The battle was raging in full force. The flashes of the two characters and the waves of force that occurred when their fist met pushed everything and everyone out of the way. It was truly a battle in an alien planet with two powerhouses duking it out while a lone spaceship took on a fleet in the skies. Chichi and the two children didn't have many ships to take shoot down anymore. The game of Galactica was two-thirds done with no damage to their ship so far, with Chichi's expert flying skills. You haven't even come close to my real power. I've only been using 1% of my power. A spike of power came in like a raging bull. His counters were broken with sheer force by the immense power Freezer was displaying. A straight jab was coming right at Goku's face and he was ready to block it with both hands. However, at the corner of his eyes, he saw a slithery appendage coming at his flank. Unable to counter both at the same time with his speed, he jumped back to get a better position. Unfortunately, with a sudden increase in speed, Frieza's tail barely caught his ankle. Using that, Frieza threw Goku as hard as he could completely turning some of the rocks that he crashed into dust. Goku was finally pushed back, and Frieza was surprised by how much it took out of him to do so, even when in his final form. Rising out of the rocks, he gently patted off the dust from his shoulder, as if it were a minor inconvenience. Looks like I can't play around anymore. Piccolo, take Raditz and get Jinyu to swap them no matter what. Chichi should be done soon and pick you guys up. Goku got into his typical powering up stance 
But Piccolo knew he shouldn't stay any longer, and dashed away with Raditz in tow. Fur spurted out from all around his body, as he got in the transformation of the primal Saiyan once again. It cannot be. A Saiyan with such an outward transformation. Only one exists that Frieza could think of. The legendary Saiyan only entails. You are a Super Saiyan. Not quite the silhouette of a great ape roared behind Goku at Frieza. The pressure felt like a thousand Saiyans and their rage against him. Raw unbridled power. Taking to the skies, Goku came in like a raging tornado. The pinched Frieza with both of his legs by having them both come in opposite directions. They both connected with a thigh and with his hold, he flipped and threw him to the ground. Giving chase, he gave a nice chop towards Frieza's neck. Barely able to block after increasing his power, his hands flew fluidly to hold the back of Goku's head. Bringing his head down, he connected it with his knee making Goku flip back. Stretching his hand, he fired a barrage of death beams at Goku, who was still flying through the air. One, two, three, four, five. Goku twisted and contorted his body, so that each of the death beams would graze his body. He landed on his feet and jumped towards Frieza to keep the fight on. Despite the power that was being thrown around willy-nilly, they were usually staying in one place duking it out. Goku whiffed a punch when Frieza flipped over him, producing two death sources. He turned to face Goku, and they were whizzing towards him to slice him to pieces. Dodging one so that it would cut a few chest hairs, he grabbed the other one in the middle and threw it back. Not expecting a result like so, Frieza's cheek spurted a good amount of blood. Looking down at his own blood in anger, he powered up once more shaking the core of the plane they were standing on. You despicable monkey, experience 50% of my power. On the other side of the planet, some movement was taking place unbeknownst to the fighters. It seems it is my time to go. This opponent is stronger than I thought. Cauliflower and Kale flew to the tree in no time. The hunk of wood towered over them bigger than anything they have ever seen. Kale let's blast it together. Surely with the amount of power we have recently gained, it should be enough. Alright, sis. Crush cannon. Resist blast. The two girls combined their Kai blast next to each other. The two mixed and were interwoven in a color ray of green and red. The large Kai blast impacted the tree, shaking it greatly. They kept going and going, but even though the tree moved back and forth, it did not falter. Eventually, they ran out of steam and tree looked at them as if mocking them for their poor performance. Futile effort. This is the tree of might. Its sacred glory could not be toppled by two females. A group of five aliens ascended to them from the top of the tree. They all were unique in their own way besides the twins that were standing beside one another. Who are these weaklings? We are the people who planted this tree and with its fruit, a leader turtle will be able to run the universe. Just hearing them state the fact that they planted the fruit made Caulifer zone out the rest of the bullshit that they were spewing. So it was you guys that did this to this planet. Prepared to get clobbered, Caulifla went in without warning and punched the tall orange man who was in front with all of her strength. The sheer power of him breaking sound waves to hit the tree was deafening. The dust settled and it was very transparent that he was dead on the spot. All the other crew members took one look at their second in command's fate and scattered. The two girls did not let the rats escape so easily. Kale caught up to the pale one and shot a Kai blast on his face point blank. His head went up in flames as his body slowly floated down to hit the ground with a thud. Caulifla went up the robotic organism and started fury of unpredictable punches that closely resonated with her personality. Unpredictable or not, the cyborg could not even see one punch and went down easily. The two ball sacks flew together in a spiral, trying to get to the top of the tree. They were so focused on escape that they didn't see the two fists coming in their direction. Once they were right next to each other, Kale got the left, and Caulifla got the right. It was as if they were going to fist bump, but the two shorties intercepted with their heads. That deals with that time to figure out how to get tired of this tree. I was not expecting to see two female Saiyans here, and high class ones at that. A familiar face descended on upon the two girls. He had standard space armor and a strange black coat covering half of his body. On his hand was a prickly red fruit the size of his hand. Kakarot. Not it can't be another Saiyan. He, it seems you have met Kakarot. I was wondering why he hasn't destroyed this planet yet, but it is my fortune. I was able to get my hands on the fruit of the Tree of Might. He held the fruit in his hand as if it was his prized possession. You seem pretty weak low class. Tell me how to destroy this tree, and I will think about sparing your life. 
The girls were able to learn how to detect Kai in addition to their gravity training. Someone like Turtles who didn't know anything about it would not hide his strength, meaning that what they felt was most likely his true power. I was about to make the same proposal to you. Both of you become my mistresses, and I will lead you to become rulers of this universe by my side. With these fruits, even Frieza would pose no problem. Miss me with that. With your puny power, how can a fruit even come close to making you beat me? Cauliflower didn't want to talk to this Goku lookalike any longer. Running up to him to finally finish the job, she was so ready to clock that grin from his face. Before she could reach him, Turtles took a big juicy bite from his fruit. It was as if in slow motion, the crunch reverberated in everyone's ears. Turtles' muscles bulged grotesquely before reverting back to its original form. By this time, Cauliflower reached Turtles and punched him in the face. She felt stopped midway with some resistance. Her hand was moving to the side without her doing anything. And it was revealed that Turtles grabbed her arm and slowly moved it, so they could see eye to eye. Kel helped Cauliflower out by launching a Kai blast between them to separate them. They both jumped back with the tree backing Turtles up, and Kale backing Cauliflower. Turtles tore the cloak that he was wearing and tossed it into the wind. Let me knock some sense into you females. Back on Namek, Goku was barely holding on to the fight with Frieza's boost in power. His primal form could not keep up with 50% power, and Frieza capitalized that by going full offensive. A mini death ball came rushing towards Goku, and he met at a Kai blast of his own. The ball of death blazed past the Kai like it wasn't there and kept going towards Goku. Goku blocked it with both of his hands, but from the dust marks around his body, it was clear who was on the winning side. This seems to be your limit. It turns out you aren't the legendary Super Saiyan after all. The signature glow on his finger indicated what was coming next. It was now or never. Kaioken. A red glow erupted within his orange one, making a rage-like color. Goku reached Freezer faster than the death beam reached his previous spot. Goku clapped Freezer's ears making him disoriented. After a few dazed steps, Goku barraged Freezer through the air with a series of attacks that he could not defend against. It was as if Goku was playing table tennis with himself and Freezer was the ball. At the end of the streak, Goku put both of his hands together and buried Freezer meters into the ground. He added some Kai blast inside the hole for an extra flavor. Hearing a rumble inside, Goku back up completely. An explosion of lava and rocks came with Freezer when he emerged from the ground. The Freezer that emerged was what you call somewhat different than what he entered. The skinny Freezer looked like he chugged dozens of steroids while he was down there to get this swole. His power was doubled, and his anger was tripled than before. However, Goku was not worried one bit. Kinder. Kaioken times three. The battle kept on going for a few more minutes. Goku's body was holding on with the usage of Kaioken times 3 due to his superior primal body. Frieza conjured two death sources on his hands and started to fly to Goku. Goku expected him to throw it at him, but the roided fan didn't and just kept approaching him. When Frieza finally reached Goku, he started to use the sources like a chainsaw swinging them in Goku's general direction, dodging rapidly. This was the last thing he expected Freezer to do. He threw one to surprise Goku, but that didn't work. Feeling a bit of foreboding, Goku returned the favor with a solar flare right in front of his eyes. Freezer recoiled in pain with the remaining death saucer losing its energy. Goku jumped sideways even though he stunned the tyrant losing his counter. It turns out that he was correct in retreating when the death saucer that Freezer originally threw came back around like a boomerang. Freezer remembered what is coming from the sound and ducked in desperation. It did not save him when the spinning wheel of Kai cleanly sliced off a portion of his tail. That pain forcefully opened his eyes. They were nearly completely red but fading fast. Sensing Goku's Kai, he turned to face him and had only red in his eyes. Quite literally, he didn't take the time to think about his punches, nor wipe the irritation from his eyes. He was still fighting with sheer willpower. That did not take him far. Frieza packed his full power in his punch. But Goku blocked with his flex bicep. Doing a quick turn and kicking him, Frieza flew through the air. Chasing him, Frieza couldn't stop the punch on his chest or the one on his head. On the ground facing down, Frieza felt like he had more fight in him. But his chances were getting dimmer when Goku put his foot on him. End of the road, Frieza. This truly was the end. Piccolo somehow tricked Jinyu into transforming back into Raditz. He spewed some stuff about either helping Frieza and his own body 
or stay in the body of the worst Saiyan alive. Needless to say, once he changed, Piccolo disintegrated him. After that, they grabbed Vegeta who barely woke from his little nap and got picked up by Chichi, who already destroyed Freeze's pathetic fleet. It was just him alone. Is this really where I am going to die? By this stupid monkey. And to think I was here for this setting seemed familiar. Frieza pinned with Goku above him ready to kill him. Except, last time he was stopped. He fired the Kai wave aiming to explode Frieza's head, leaving him no room to resurrect. What exploded was not Frieza's head, but Goku's entire body. That explosion was big that Goku flew back until he hit a rock. When the smoke cleared, he was covered in soot, and his Kaioken was temporarily disabled. You seem to be in an awful amount of trouble brother. I absolutely enjoyed seeing your spoiled self get beaten up like that. However, I couldn't let you shame the rest of us by dying to this worthless monkey. A beat down could not describe what was happening with Turtles and the girls. They were exponentially powerful from when they started due to the gravity chamber, but the fruit of the Tree of Might outweighed all of their efforts. You girls pack quite the punch, I am surprised. I wonder how you got this strong without the help of the fruit. We don't use cheat codes. We hone our bodies to the fullest. Corlifla rebutted hard. How can this be? All of her training, all of her progression was surpassed, just because this low class ate a fruit. That the hand of those words, Turtles frowned a bit. He was done playing around. Corlifla and Kel had their coordinated assault, defense, and synergy in general. But Turtles rendered that useless with how much power he attained. Grabbing Kale by the hand when she threw a punch, he swung her to his other side where Corlifla was. Kale landed on Corlifla, making them both fly horizontally through the air. The scenery changed when the girls came flying through the center of the tree. Above them, rows of red spiky fruit were located in all its glory. Turtles powered up his Kai in the shape of a small circle and threw it at them. Kill Driver! This kill driver had a center blob of Kai, where the outer ring would connect randomly in the form of lighting. The girls were both caught in it when they were right in the center of the tree. Whites in their eyes appeared briefly from the shocking experience. Both of them fell to the ground with Corlifla being crushed by Kale. They both slowly got up with burnt marks around them, and looked up to where Turtles was flying. Last chance, if you don't grovel on the ground before right now, you will be on the ground for eternity. Pure enjoyment from seeing pain was displayed just as much as the evil tyrant himself. Goku heard that voice and a deep pit sunk within his stomach. He didn't need to open his eyes to know that a taller purple and white version of Frieza stood before him. I knew that my sources that you were here were correct. You and your band cannot hide from my empire. Frieza stood up and flew up to Kula without even looking at him. It was as if the bad blood between the brothers were non-existent. Hearing that little jab when Frieza said it was his empire, Kula ignored it for now. Since he didn't want to start fighting with him, he would kill him after killing that wild card of a Saiyan. On the other side, Frieza could not help but feel as if he was killing two birds with one stone. After killing Goku, he could easily kill his weaker brother and go home on his ship. Come in Chichi. We might need to switch to Plan C. Plan C. No one ever thought it was going to come to this. Goku has just been a quintessential problem solver that they never in a million years thought that he would have trouble. How could you when an unexpected guest arrived? Come brother, let us kill this Saiyan first before we talk about our grievances. In a triangle formation, the two brothers stared at Goku with killing intent laced throughout their eyes. He had no choice but to fight, for now. He could technically win, so it should take the chance before initiating Plan C. Kaioken times 4. When they felt that pressure they knew they were in for a treat. They both rushed Goku as if they could read each other's minds, and started attacking him from all angles. Death beams were being fired left and right, and even with the power increase, Goku could not keep up. The two brothers coordinated with each other like a well-oiled machine. One came from the right and kicked him in the face, while the other pinned him by tackling him and holding him. The fight lasted a while, and Goku felt the effects. Even with this stronger body, Kaioken was still unstable being used for so long, especially at times 4. It was time to initiate Plan C. He used a good chunk of his Kai reserves, 
and made a sizable explosion in front of him to ward away the brothers in an attempt to buy time. He reached into his pocket that was surprising lot ripped off yet and held a small box of some sort. Clicking the button, he put it up close to his mouth and spoke. Come in Balma, launch plan C right now. Radio silence. No voice was sent back. Not a sound. Goku tried again. Balma are you there? We need to go for plan C. And again, no response. The frost demons looked at Goku in amusement as to how Goku planned to get out of this. Goku started to really sweat now. Where is Bulma? Stupid machine. Why won't you work? On the side of her lab, Bulma scavenged from her previous communicator in an attempt to rebuild it fast. It was better than trying to fix the broken machine. While there was a giant root sticking out of it, she kept on banging on the machine as if it would magically work. You would think a genius would be a little smarter in trying to find the problem than hitting it a few times. Apparently hitting it is the smart move. Or she has been hanging around Yamcha for a little longer than needed. Surely they don't need help as much as we do. They have Goku. Fuck me. The fight was raging even harder than before with the planet looking devastated. Goku used his original move to suck and entrap Frieza. Using Frieza as a sort of whip, he lashed at Cooler multiple times. Jokes on him, Cooler was totally fine with punching Frieza in the face when he came towards him. This was getting nowhere and the people on the ship were really getting worried. The real anxious one was Vegeta. I never thought Kakarot could actually fight Frieza and Cooler and hold his ground. Maybe he will be the one to avenge our race and not me. E -r 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 -r. He is stronger than me many times over. I was useless and got out of the fight on Frieza's second form. It was at this time that Kua actually saw the ship that was just hovering over them. He had an evil idea that his brother overlooked severely. When Frieza came at Cooler again, Cooler this time grabbed Frieza. What was a weapon became a tug of war with Frieza being the rope. Cooler let go of the rope when Goku started to become impatient, and it bounced back at him crazily. He dodged the incoming Frieza and actually let go making Frieza's butt stick out of the rock that he was embedded in. He was going to feel that tomorrow, if he makes it. Looking back at Cooler after finally feeling that he could win, he saw Cooler looking at the ship with a finger towards it. He was too late to stop him. The death beam burst through the air and hit the ship right on its engine, making the back explode. Luckily, Bomber's expert built made it so that the entire ship didn't explode immediately. Unluckily, they still rocketed towards the ground and at a record pace. The ship landed on the ground and exploded a second afterward right in front of Goku's face. The explosion blew his battered body back as he watched in horror the possibilities that this could ensue. You haven't said anything. I assume that you're reconsidering your options. Saiyans are always hard-headed. I can see that you have some intelligence in you. Smart. This planet will die in a few minutes anyways. No one can stop it. Not even me and my incredible power. Turtles was rambling on again, but Caulifla didn't hear any of it. It was not like she was ignoring him on purpose. Her ears were just ringing and her eyes were blurry as well. His eyes then shifted to the fruit that littered above him. My beloved fruit and I will rule this universe. Greatness blah blah, power blah blah. Kulifla drowned him out and looked at what she had on her hand. She didn't know when it fell to the ground, either when they barraged the tree with their kai or with the commotion of the fight earlier. However, this was her only hope. She lifted the small red fruit to her lips. And Kale did the same with a similar fruit that Cauliflower gave her. She took the biggest of bites and chowed down the rest as if she was starving. Juicy. Savory. Delicious. She could feel the power of the fruit course through her veins started with her mouth. The nutrients made her stomach feel tight and her muscles even tighter. Her body and Kai multiplied in power. So much so that she felt like a new person. Looking over to Kale with a renewed clarity in her eyes, she could see that a similar transformation was gone through by her friend. The only visible exception was that she had a little more bulk and muscle than before instead of reverting fully back. Turtles felt a little too narcissistic talking on and on about himself and how great he is. Maybe not narcissistic enough. Anyways, he wanted to see the reactions of the people he was trying to lure. He felt something off when they were looking at each other more energized than ever. Maybe his words were actually hyping them up. The scouter on his face didn't agree with him when the number spiked from its original number to numbers never before seen. It wasn't soon before the scouter couldn't take it anymore with its changing number and exploded on his face. Turtles wanted to run, 
The only amazing thing that could boost their power so dramatically was the fruit of the Tree of Might. His suspicions were confirmed when he saw the bare naked core on the ground near them. He planned his retreat by taking a couple of fruits and leave the planet to die with everyone on it. Unfortunately for him, Caulifla stopped gawking her own body and power when she didn't hear Turtle's villain monologue. Picking up as many fruits as he can, he sneakily flew out of there. If he had just left without trying to get those fruits, maybe he would have survived. Greed is a killer. Stopped him in his tracks by grabbing the back of his neck. Her bulky muscles held him in the air like a helpless puppy. All of his fruit was dropped when Kale tightens her grip on his neck. He tried to make her let go. The air in his lungs was slowly getting wilted away. Caulifla flew up to look at the panic within his eyes and smirked. Thanks for the bite. We should give you something in return. Kel threw turtles at bottom of the trunk of his tree, charging their kai like last time they decided it was now or never. Crush cannon. Resist blast. Their kai collided and combined once more. This wave of attack was 10x bigger than before, and all of its glory hit turtles right in the face. His entire body was being crushed, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Ah, unlike last time when the tree only swayed, they could visibly see the tree giving way. Turtles felt his back loosen in its hardness, and felt like he was being lifted up in the air ever so slowly. The tree and all of its roots were loosening up from the soil that it was deeply embedded in. One last push, that was all that was needed. And that they did. Using all the power they gained from the fruit into their blast, the tree was finally airborne. It slowly went higher and higher, with the roots following behind like tendrils. Caulifla and Kale stopped injecting more of their power, and when the end of the beam hit the tree, it exploded in a shiny fashion. Green and white sparkles covered the earth restoring life and energy to everything that had it stolen. Too bad the girls couldn't see. They were beat laying on the floor inversely from each other. Nice job, Kale. I knew I could count on you. Always. In their normal close relationship, they fist bumped to the hard fought victory they had. Both of them at the same time sensed a power level higher than turtles. Alarmed, they turned towards that direction, only to be relieved when they saw three bald men. Tian, Krillin, and Chaotzu arrived a couple of minutes after the battle and overlooked the wreckage that the fight made. They barely spotted the two girls because their power levels were so low. Flying down to them, Chien gave them both Senzu beans to restore their energy. Feeling restoration energy on par with the fruit of the Tree of Might's power-up energy, they jumped up in amazement. Wow, I never knew that those little beans could give you so much energy. No wonder Goku took a few on his trip to Frieza. With those, he could beat Frieza three times over. Don't be too sure. The beans may give you your full power back, but it is no use if your opponent is stronger than you. Caulifla took that into consideration and thanked Chen for his support, albeit a lot late. Kale and Caulifla decided to return to Capsule Corporation to rest and check on Bomber, while the Zed Fighters helped clean the mess. Returning to Capsule Corporation, they found Bomber very intensely struggling to get something within her previous communicator machine. When Bomber saw the two girls, her eyes light up in delight. What took you so long? I need your help. Get that part of there and bring it closer to my new machine. They silently did what she asked when they heard the anxiousness in her voice. After they did that, they waited a few more minutes for Bomber to do the finishing touches. Pressing the on button on her contraption, the display came alive much to Bomber's exasperation. The glee in her face was drained of all of its blood. When she saw the history of the signal sent, Chichi, where are you? It isn't looking too good. There was someone else with Frieza just as powerful as him. Goku come in Bulma, launch Plan C right now. Goku Bulma are you there? We need to go for Plan C Caulifla go get the box over in my room. You should easily see it. We need to start Plan C. What could have happened on Earth? What is Bulma doing that she can't help us? Is the machine broken? No, it can't be. Chichi communicated with Bulma during our outer space trip. Is she in trouble? What could trouble her? Goku couldn't help but think these thoughts as he dashed towards the wreckage of the ship. He had to stop short when a purple laser cut a line in front of him telling him not to go any further. Now now, if we let you do that, we wouldn't be able to see the despair in your face one moment longer. The two brothers were in the way between him and this loved ones and Vegeta. Reaching into his pocket, 
There were a dozen of Senzu beans packed inside. Popping one in his mouth, he gained his power back and furiously fought his way towards them. Senzu beans were of no use if they were dead. Shenron can't take away the pain of dying slowly either. Kaio Ken times 5. It became Goku trying his hardest to push them down long enough to reach the ship. His panicky movements made it easier for them to stall and land blows even with the power increase. Kula eventually had Goku back on the ground again. A few well-timed blows were enough to tire out Goku once again during his Kaioken times 5 state. Ha ha ha. Weakling, getting so worked up over a few puny mortals. Yes, I love that look on your face. Let me see if the people on this ship could make the same expressions. Frieza walked up to the ship and opened the fiery ball of metal. Goku couldn't move an inch from his position under Kula's fort. The Senzu beans felt like a mile away from the way his arm was crackling. Emerging from the ship was someone with Frieza. A girl. Frieza held Chichi like she was a doll. She was unconscious with some blood coming from her mouth and parts of her body. That relief that Goku felt when she was alive dissipated when he heard the screams that came from her, when Frieza squeezed her arm a little. Goku looked down and closed his eyes. Waves of helplessness came over him. Why did I come here? Why was I so confident in this world where every turn is danger? Where did I think everything will go my way? Why did I think I was powerful enough? Don't look away now. It is the best part. Kula lifted Goku's head and forced his eyes open. Seeing Frieza about to death beam her thigh unlocked something within Goku. Don't stop now, become stronger. Using all the anger he felt, he pushed it towards his conviction. Goku's hair started to flash yellow, while his eyes became a crystallized blue. Kula's foot started to burn to melt all of what he knew about Saiyans. H H H. That scream felt refreshing. It blew Kula away from the laying Saiyan. Slowly standing up, Frieza was mesmerized by what was before him. Golden hair, golden aura, and blue eyes. A super Saiyan. Blinking once, he didn't know how he got beside Kula embedded into the wall. Giving Chichi a Senzu bean, her full consciousness came too. She saw her slightly different looking husband fueled with silent rage. The situation was about to be explained to her. But instead, the communication device in Goku's pocket came first. Answering it, they both heard Bulma's voice filled with anticipation. Goku. Goku, are you there? There was something on our end. But it has been resolved. Caulifla is just got back with Plan C. Do we still need to go through with it? Goku's calm voice surprised the hysterical Bulma and was about to confirm her plans. However, he had a different idea. No. Go for Plan D. Another change in plans. It really showed how cautious Goku was. This plan, however, didn't really sit well if Chichi and Bulma. They felt it was unnecessary and dumb. Plan D. Why Plan D? Let's just go Plan C and have you come back. I can just make another ship for you. Bulma wasn't having any of it. She wasn't going to work her butt off and think that her love was dead, just to have him initiate Plan D. Trust me on this Bulma. Go Plan D. As he said this, he was staring into the dark pupils of Chichi. Like hell, I will. Goku you listen dash, Bulma do it. Chichi. Chichi interrupted Bulma's thoughts and sided with Goku. While looking at Goku, she couldn't help but feel like he was on top of the world. She didn't know if it was the new look that was getting to her though. You. Ugh. Fine. Caulifla do it. And with that Bulma hung up. Goku gave the Senzu beans to Chichi, understanding what do too. She went inside the ship and gave it to everyone before they could die. Goku turned to face the frost demons that were looking at him with great fear. I knew we should have killed him when we got the chance, but you wanted to play with that harlot. You are truly too spoiled brother. Who knew that he was going to transform into the legendary Super Saiyan of the past? I thought that a cursed hairy form was his limit. The crew of people started to line up behind Goku. Kula smirked at the obvious weak spot. It doesn't matter. With their ship destroyed, those weaklings could not escape. He can't take both of us while also protecting them. Both of them started to laugh very evil laughs. You could tell it was evil because it sounded like every other villain ever. His plan was ingenious. An ingenious plan it was, too bad that the victims that he targeted were disappearing right before his very eyes. What? The sky was dark with an eternal dragon covering the sky instead. I want all of the people that went with Goku to return to Earth. Not not Goku himself. Bulma hesitated a bit at the end. Your wish is done. Goodbye. 
And like that Shenron went back inside his residence and dashed away in seven separate directions. Making sure to grant their wish before leaving, several bright lights appeared before them. Dimming out a bit, it was revealed to be Vegeta, Piccolo, Raditz, Chichi, Bulla, and Gohan like Bulma asked. The latter three all rushed to Bulma when they saw where they were and hugged her. Bulma wasn't having any of it and demanded what happened. Why did we use Plan D where we leave Goku instead of Plan C where everyone is brought back? Something happened to Goku his hair. It was Kakarot turned into a Super Saiyan. That bastard. Vegeta chimed in, and his words shocked everyone, especially the Saiyans to their core. Achieving a transformation of the legends was no easy feat. Vegeta stormed off as everyone else got close to Kofila and Kale to hear the tale of what happened on Earth. Vegeta was hiding listening in as well. How could this happen? Explained Brother Frieza was in full baby rage mode. Everything wasn't going his way and frankly, Kula had enough of him. It was time to finally transform. Muscle bulging seemed to be a common theme as of late, and Kula was no exception. Everything about him expanded similar to Frieza's full power state but more streamlined. His head expanded with spikes inward as his height got bigger, originally towering over Frieza. Not he was like a mammoth to him. A Fasimus covered his face to finish the transformation. Can't have flies going in there while fighting. E brother, what is this? Now his brother looked different had a higher power level than him. A new transformation. Impossible. Cooler looked at Frieza and Frieza stood in a place frozen in fear. Sensing Frieza's power level taking a deep dive throughout the fight, he decided Frieza no longer necessary. Just as Frieza berated himself to be afraid of his brother, Cooler went up to Frieza and sliced his head off before he could do anything. Clean and swift, no remorse in just killing his own brother. Goku watched also a little bit without emotions. He was your only chance to taking me on. He would only get in the way. Cooler dashed towards Goku confident in his own strength. Punch after punch kept missing. Goku didn't even feel like Cooler was trying at all. Did he really get that much of an increase in strength? Goku felt like it wasn't even his own body he was controlling. He still felt angry. It was laying format in his stomach still filling all of his thoughts. Calming down a little. It felt like he was in Kaioken, but it didn't tax his body at all. Kamehameha. Firing a short Kamehameha wave at Kula, he retreated and countered with a death flash. The attacks created a rise in smoke between the fighters, coming at Goku tearing the smoke apart with two eye lasers. Goku slapped the two of them in opposite direction. What the beams revealed was an ash-covered Kula looking not too pleased with what transpired. My transformation, was it not enough? Will I die by this filthy Saiyan? He bored his fist in frustration, as if they knew what their leader was thinking. Salsa, Dor, and Knees, the cooler armored squadron, sprang up to attack Goku from behind. Goku looked at them from the corner of his eyes briefly. He then moved his finger to shoot them down one at a time, with a thin Kai blast to their brains. At that exact moment, Kula flew at his fastest speed away from Goku. Already fooled by this trick, Goku was just seconds behind Kula. Seeing that he was tailed, he broke all restraints and started to carve the planet they were on with a continuous kite blast to its center. The planet was breaking apart as Kula's ship was in sight. Similar to Frieza, the circular ship was laying dormant waiting for usage. Goku smiled at the sight of his escaped ship, shelling out a burst of speed. Goku caught up with Kula and hammered him down to the ground. He fell in the ravine that he was carving up, and was dangerously close to the molten lava. Goku booked it to the ship and entered. At the front of the ship, Goku started the ship up from all of his learning from Vegeta and Bulma. By the time Kula made it out of the ravine with some bits of his flesh missing, the ship was already out of the planet's atmosphere. You won't take my ship Saiyan. Kula did his best to reach his ship in the distance. His fate was sealed when two bursts of Kai came from his ship and hit him right in the chest. The Kai blast that hit him forced him back on the planet, and the other was headed straight towards the core from the ravine. The planet exploded when it landed. Cooler's spaceship was top-notch, and already escaped the blast zone of the small planet. Seems like my work here is done. Time to go to Yardrat. And with that, his ship entered full speed and dashed off to the unknown. An enormous spaceship appeared in the distant space from a planet very quickly. It landed on an empty field near the first blob of civilization the pilot could see. The residents were in mass hysteria after see whose spaceship was approaching, and they were already counting their days. 
The door opened and walked out the opposite of who they thought was coming out. It was a spiky-haired humanoid with standard-issued armor. Even though it wasn't who they thought it was, the ship and armor were telling enough of who this person's faction was. Oh, it's a member of the Freezer Corporation. Are you back to finish what the Jinyu Force started? We won't go down easily. Wow, there are a lot of you around me. But I am not part of the Freezer Force. There were thousands of residents from Yadrad around him. Presumably copies, but even if they weren't, they wouldn't be a problem. Liar. I recognize that ship is Freezer's. You must be a high-ranking official here to kill us all off. It was pretty understandable why they thought it was Freezer's. The two brothers had very similar designs after all. Please you misunderstand. I had just came from killing Freezer. I came here because I heard your kind have very interesting techniques. Killed Freezer. But how? Color them curious. They started to cautiously enter the spaceship as Goku was escorted to the Elder Yadration. Hum, it is true. I guess from us fluster we did not fully inspect your Kai. It is filled with positive energy no doubt. We owe you great gratitude for taking care of Freezer and the Jinyu Force. For that, we can teach you what we know of spirit control. That really happened here. I can't believe we missed it. Do you have any more of those fruits that you were talking about? Whack, you idiot. Even if I did, King Kai would have confiscated it like it was a shiny car. Raditz flew and ate dirt when Caulifla whacked him over the head. Still not used to her newfound strength, a large bump accompanied Raditz to Dreamland. All my training and she surpassed me with just a fruit anyways what happened to Goku. You can tell Caulifla was waiting for this day to come. And couldn't help but ask when Bulma redacted him from the wish. That idiot. He wanted to go to a different planet that he heard of to train again. Can't he just give it a rest and relax or something? Bulma pouted adorably when she expressed her grievances. Gohan and Bulla both pouted seconds later sharing Bulma's feelings. That is just how he is they all said goodbye to one another and left their separate ways. Shichi went up to Bulma after she had a sneaking suspicion creeping up on her. So call Lifla. Yes. Six months later, Bulma was back to her solitude days under the sun on the beach. Shichi being the best wife ever watched over the kids after Bulma's stressful few days in the lab. The beach this time was not artificially in her room, but a genuine one. Well, as genuine as you can get when renting out a private beach. She was dressed scantily to get the maximum tan with no one around her. Her phone jumped up a few times in excitement from the message that was received. Lowering her sunglasses, she expected a message from Chichi or something. After all, the girls did do activities to ease the occasional boredom with Goku gone. Instead, she got a message she wasn't expecting at all but hoping all the same. Goku almost home. Hour away. Nearly dropped her phone in surprise. She got up without dressing and left instantly from that beach without telling anyone. When she arrived, Chichi, Caulifla, Kale, and the kids were already there at the front entrance. Chichi also got the message from her phone and told everyone else to be ready. It wasn't long before Kula's enormous spaceship landed on the lawn beside the house, spreading waves of panic throughout the city once more. Aliens. There are more of them. I told you people that today was the day. The hysterical man dropped the today is the end of the world sign and ran off to hide in his bunker. Out walked Goku from the spaceship and we were expectedly barraged by the people around him. The clothes he had on were quite strange but also cool looking to say the least. The fashion was never seen on earth at least. Ho, oh, how have you been? Why are you always gone for so long? They all ushered Goku inside the house, eager to hear what separated them again from Goku. They weren't fanatics on strength like Goku was so the details were better left evicted from the story. However, he did tell them how much he grew from spirit control, instant transmission, and the like. The trip was fun, and the Yadrations were very cool. My training isn't technically complete, but I can continue it from here. Also Bulma, I need you to look into something for me. Bulma and Chichi were around Goku who was laying down on the table with medical equipment surrounding him. Bulma was typing away at the computer that was connected to the machines that were monitoring Goku. You were right, there is something located at your heart. Hold on, let me enhance. Located on Goku's heart, Bulma spotted the wily little speck that was causing the trouble. I don't know what intuition got you to check on yourself. But thank goodness you did. The virus that was dormant in your heart long ago has been activated somehow. With the information that I already have on the virus, 
the cure should not be long off. The heart virus, the deadly disease worse than the coronavirus if you could believe it. It killed Goku in a different reality. And one of the prevailing theories on why Goku had it was that it originated from the sacred water from Korin. Seems like those theories were only half correct. After ingesting the water, Goku had Bomber do a checkup on his body, namely the heart. The virus was laying there residing, dormant and harmless. Using advanced medical techniques with the help of Dr. Briefs, they were able to study it to a great degree. However, it seemed as if the virus was missing a piece of itself to make itself whole. And without the whole virus to study, they couldn't make a concrete cure to get rid of it. Now, after his trip to Yadrat, it had completed itself and begun harming its host. After a couple of days, I will have the cure ready. We really don't know the contagiousness of it, but for safety, I would be careful. Wait, darn it. That means we can't heart disease was defeated. One of Goku's greatest villains that were able to kill Goku. Next to Swirly Blast and Fat Cell. Goku got up from the table and stretch. What a long day he had out in space where the view was endless the same. He just wanted to go to sleep and then prepare for the android invasion that followed. Leaving the room, he found Cauliflower waiting for him at the door. The kids were sleeping as it was night, and he thought she was going to. Goku wondered why they were still at Capsule Core after all this time. I guess they don't have a place to stay. I don't mind that they stay here. Vegeta didn't want to live with a bunch of babies as he called them barging into his room, but still demanded to have a luxury place with people to do stuff for him. Bulma got annoyed with him quickly and sent him to her sister tights to deal with him. Goku said hi to Cauliflower thinking that she was up for a late night snack or something and got curious. Chage, hey, G Goku. What is happening? Goku thought he was talking to Cauliflower, not Kale. It was extremely dark so Goku could have been seeing things when he saw red colored on Cauliflower's face. I I dash, hold your horses. Make your move a couple of days later when he drinks the cure. Chichi and Bomber came up from behind Goku and separated the fluster girl making her more flustered. W, what are you talking about? I do not like him. Gem MPH. Cauliflower's hair went on end when her secret was exposed and quickly denied it. She then scurried off to her room and slammed the door behind her. Does she? Yes. Days later, Goku took the pills with no problems. He felt a little woozy that day, but the moment after he felt better than ever. During the whole time, Kale was giving him death eyes that he couldn't shake. I didn't do anything. The staring intensified whenever Cauliflower was obviously doting on Goku. Goku just feigned ignorance for now, and waited for Cauliflower to have the courage to speak up. Unfortunately, that would never happen. Last night was too intense for everyone involved. Goku was sleeping next to Cauliflower as she looked up in the ceiling compiling her thoughts. It wasn't the best induction to the crew. But then again, they took the pressure out of her own hands. The shower in the room others turned off from its high pressure and steamy goodness. Chichi walked out of the shower in her birthday suit with her hair standing on end with a towel. Your bed isn't big enough for all of us so Bulma and I will go and sleep in our bed. You get to get him all for yourself hot stuff. But tomorrow you are sleeping with us. And with that, she wiggled out of the door and into the hallway. Shaking her head, Cauliflower snuggled closer into Goku's embrace and fell quickly into slumber. Everything was normal and smooth in the household so far. Life fell back into a routine six months after that hectic day in outer space and on the home front. Goku training as usual in his gravity room with the gravity amped up to 200. That Super Saiyan activation really upped his ceiling, allowing him to reach new heights even further. That was really notable was Kale and Cauliflower's growth. Goku couldn't believe that they grew up and are steady on par with Vegeta even with all his dedication. After hearing what had happened on Earth, he couldn't believe his ears. Not only did two villains from the movies showed up, but at the same time, something definitely isn't right. Just as he was going over this in his head, he heard a ring coming from the front door. I got it. You got up from his seat watching TV and went to open the door. There you are brother. I heard you were back. Raditz greeted Goku with a smile on his face. Raditz felt weird living in the Capsule Corporation house with women and children, especially his brothers. 
So he left to live in Goku's old house. Sorry, I didn't get to meet up with you. Chichi told me that she messaged everyone so I was about to plan a meetup. Don't worry about it. Anyways, I have to tell you something. You are leaving. Goku was sitting in the kitchen table with Bulma, Gohan, Bulla surrounding him listening to Raditz's reason for leaving. Yeah, I am going out to space. Now that Freezer is gone, there are not that many organizations that will hinder my plans to really explore and grow stronger in the journey. Cheated. Worst. That is what Raditz felt like from going on missions with Vegeta 2 even now. Vegeta, Caulifla, and Kale already caught up to his meager power level, and Goku's kids were catching up with their crazy potential and their dad's regimen. The only time he felt that he accomplished something meaningful was when he beat Nappa. He was hoping this trip will provide some insight and more. I wanted to tell you before I leave. I could just take one of the spare fighters in Cooler's spaceship. Wait Uncle Raditz you are leaving. Nuu, don't leave. The little kids, believe it or not, got a little closer with their uncle. Too bad it could not be the same for him. I finally get to leave these little grimy hands. Good thing I didn't mention that they were also one of the main reasons. Sure. Goku understood and gave Raditz the capsule that contained that massive ship. They all said farewell with Chichi, Kale, and Caulifla. They didn't really have much enthusiasm, but the gesture is what counts. The small spaceship filled with supplies faded out of view into a galaxy far, far away. Three months later, so you really do love him, even after what he did to you. Kale, I told you that it isn't his fault. Besides, it's not like I didn't like it. Caulifla Kale and Caulifla were talking together in Kale's room with their privacy. Kale knew that Caulifla was officially part of that blasted Goku's harem three months ago. But today was the day Caulifla finally told her about the finer details of that day. Still that little. She stopped abruptly when she saw Corfila's stern look. She didn't want her closest person on this planet to drift further away from her. As long as you are happy I knew you would understand. Corlifla hugged the ever-living life out of Kale. Kale blushed a little and hugged back awkwardly. She regretted it little when she went on and on about Goku and their life together. The dates, the talks, the sex. Do you really not have any attraction towards him? That ape form really gets me every time he does it. No, I don't really have a romantic interest in him. That sucks it would definitely be a lot more fun in the bedroom with you in it. The wide-eyed expression on Kale's face was picture perfect. Too bad Caulifla was a second late to catch it. She may have thought what she said was something casual. But it was something to take into serious consideration from the other side. Yeah, a lot of fun. So what has everyone been up to? Today was the yearly meetup that they scheduled. So that everyone gets together. Of course, they visit each other days of the year. But this way some of the more busy people can come and catch up. Apparently Launch found Chen and maybe probably forced him to see her as a woman. And they are dating now. Speaking of dating... I see that you brought someone else with you. Mind introducing us? When posed with that question, Krillin introduced the person sitting next to him to the entire group. Oh yeah. This is Marin, my girlfriend of two months. She is a supermodel, isn't that cool? Yamcha grumbled in silence about the trap that Krillin got himself in while everyone else greeted the young lady. You are talking to me? Yes. Krillin asked me out. He is the strongest guy that I met so far, and I just love dominant men. For some reason, everyone looked at Yancha questioning if the two guys should even be in the same room. Krillin leaned over to Goku's ear in the couch beside him and whispered in his ear, Thanks for the advice last time. It wasn't much, but it really helped me realize how awesome I am. I approached her and after showing her my skills she never looked back. Notice that she doesn't say anything bad about me being short. Although she doesn't think sometimes. I maybe plan to wife her. I am glad to hear it. I wish someone can talk to Caulifla about it too. She refuses to marry me because she thinks it is stupid and pointless. I don't think marriage was really a thing back on my planet. They both looked across the house to see Roshi getting mauled by Caulifla. After she tried to grope Kale's unoccupied butt. Another girl to have problems with a... Sometimes it is good to just have one. It was time to head home. Goku got up to put on his jacket and told Caulifla and Kale the time. It was the evening, but Bulma wanted them back to test some new equipment. Everyone else decided it was time to leave as well. Roshi shrugged, plopped onto the couch where Krillin was sitting, and turned on the TV. 
This isn't the exercise program I mean the sports program. Breaking news. A helicopter was flying high above a city. The city looked like a ghost town from their angle with wide pans across the city. The chiron on the bottom read out something disturbing. However, city residents mysteriously disappear leaving homes and streets empty. Over 200,000 missing. Missing people. This is way too early. Where are the androids? Isn't Vegeta's pride supposed to be stomped on literally by Android 18 first? Has to be Cell. I have to check this out really fast. Call Ifler and Kale. You two go back and tell the others that I won't be long. Goku quickly dashed off from the island and headed straight towards the city to capture Cell and snuff him out before he got too powerful. In the back of his mind, he knew he should have been more proactive in seeking Dr. Jiro. But he was too elusive. By the time Goku was able to cover the entire Earth in his range, Dr. Jiro's Kai was already masked by the Veil of Metal. Even Bomber's extensive satellites and the such could not find Dr. Jiro and his mind that is able to par hers. Arriving at the city, he got there so fast that the helicopter that was broadcasting live was still above him. Not caring too much about it, he started to inspect the city in more detail. He peeked inside the abandoned cars, the streets, and the buildings. The quietness gave it an eerie feeling, but Goku was instead of feeling creeped out by the ghost town, was confused. The Mo of Cell is definitely missing people, but their clothes are missing too. What does this mean? Is it really Cell? If Cell really came down here for an afternoon snack, anyone would hardly think that he also left the clothes on them for added taste. Where are the clothes? We are dealing with missing people, presumably they would take their clothes with them. Looking over at the new voice, Chen came flying down next to Goku to greet him. After hearing about what happened on the news, I came over to check on this unusual case. I thought it would be something over your radar as the most powerful man on earth. Chen's smirk and tone gave away his playfulness. Good one three-eyed baldy. I thought they would leave something like a purse or anything if they got snatched out of the blue. That's why I was questioning our clothes. Right with Chen on his side, together they were looking for clues around the city. All they came up with was more of nothing much to Chen's surprise and Goku's displeasure. Let's call it a day. For now, we will find who did this eventually. Unfortunately, that day would never come. One year later, it has happened on three more separate occasions, albeit on smaller scales than the one previous. Goku traveled as fast as he could to each one hoping to catch the perpetrator responsible. It seemed as if he was seconds too late to save the towns from their disappearance. Maybe with a stroke of fortune, when he heard of one disappearance happening in real time and left immediately. By the time he got there, as usual, there was no contraption sucking people away from their homes. Goku almost gave up and debated using the Dragon Balls to locate this person, risking another step closer to Shadow Dragons, until he heard some faint noises inside a building. Going to the apartment building, he found it was locked from the inside. Not that it really mattered as there was a giant hole in the wall next to the door. Entering, a bullet whizzed through the air and missed Goku's head by an inch. Inside the building, there was a small crowd of people huddling in a corner with a security officer in the middle of them. In his hand was a pistol shaking uncontrollably. Aye, it's Goku, strongest under heaven. He came to save us. A random person in the crowd recognized him loosening the tension everyone else was feeling at that moment. You people survived one of the disappearing towns. Tell me, what did you see? The officer who was standing up finally fell to his knees. After loosening the tension on his legs, he spoke up and couldn't help but trip over his words from the trauma. It was unlike anything I ever have seen. There was a woman. Her eyes were filled with pure evil. She sucked everyone up with this strange contraption behind her. I didn't really get to see what it looked like. I ran into this building as fast as I can and met up with people here. The wall was blasted open through a bomb or something, and she was about to get us too. Until she noticed something and escaped at a speed faster than any car I have seen. That was a lot of information. It is now confirmed not sell, since the person was identified as female. Actually, since she was identified as female, this can only could be attributed to a few. Android 18. No, she wouldn't do this. Maybe someone from the movies. Zangia. This isn't her either. 
Who would do this? Do you know what way she left to? The shaky police officer pointed straight outside from where the hole was. North it seemed. Hitting the earpiece, he spoke to the person on the other side. Shitchi, I am heading north. Seems like the person's base is somewhere in that direction. Radio in if something comes up. Turning off the earpiece. He flew straight north keeping an eye out everywhere. He flew over other cities, mountains, forests, and deserts, until he stumbled upon something that looked rather strange. In all his years of being one with the wilderness like Tarzan, he never once has seen such prime flowers be ignored by bees. Watching it a little more closely, he saw that bees weren't attracted to these certain flowers, while the same kind of flowers was basically being molested by them. Chichi, these are my coordinates. Did anything happen in this stretch of forest recently? That is showing up on the records. There was a wildfire at the other edge of the forest that sparked randomly. The fire department from the nearby city was able to combat it with relative ease. That's about it. Going up to the tree. He knelt down to inspect the flowers. Touching them with his hand, he felt the lushness of it. Smelling them, they smelt refined and beautiful. As would any after seeing such flowers, he started to dig them up. I'm digging a hole. Diggy diggy hole. Much to his suspicion, the flowers had no roots at all. Meaning it wasn't a real flower no matter how much it felt like one. Standing up and knocking the tree a bit with his knuckles. It felt like real bark. But just in case, eat this tree. Goku's fist went straight through the tree its metal insides, revealing itself to be hollow and extend deeper underground. A chuckle escaped through Goku's mouth. Typical villain underground hideout. Minus one in creativity. Jumping down the pit, it was surprisingly deep. Eventually, the dirt transitioned itself to metal, landing on a piece of metal while still surrounded by metal walls. Goku broke down even more layers under him and dropped down into an elevator. Looking around the dark room, Goku could barely see a thing. Using a ball of Kai as a light source, the room he found himself in was filled to the brim with computers, books, and scattered paper everywhere. Picking up one of the papers, it was notes on a bunch of gibberish that he could not understand. Most of it was scratched off so that didn't help his case. No matter how passionate Bulma was in her research, that same stuff could not apply to him as well. At bottom of the paper, he was able to see who it was created with the signature. He couldn't read the first name, but the last name was something he was familiar with. Jiro placing the piece of paper back on the table, he was about to advance further down this metal structure. A single bulb of light illuminated itself in the hallway he was about to move forward in. He felt an unfamiliar, yet familiar, Kai swell in front of him indicating someone was there. Goku stopped and waited patiently for this person to arrive. Coming forward into the light, it was someone who was quite ugly to look at. Green in color, looking more like an alien than Piccolo. The light reflected Cell's features back to Goku's retinas. After listing him as someone who didn't do the spree of missing people to him, showing up in front of him was a slap to the face. Goku didn't want to feel like a one-time villain that would be face slapped for the plot, so he changed his thinking a bit. Well, it is obvious it wasn't Cell, but past that point, what is this standing in front of him wasn't just a normal first form cell, it was second form cell. How is cell in his second form already? There is no way he absorbed the androids already. You seem to discovered my base. Let me formally introduce myself. I am Cell, the acclamation of the strongest warriors alive. His voice was soft and slippery like a snake. He really wanted to suck up the person in front of him. He didn't seem too strong, but the consequences that he was foretold rang in his ears. He wasn't ready. Seems like my base was discovered, the tales of your prowess reach far and wide. He something was off, Goku couldn't quite place it. But Cell seemed too passive. Are you the one responsible for the disappearance of the people recently? Ha <laughs> ha. It wasn't quite me. You see Cell kept on talking about what he was doing in this space. And who made him. It was actually interesting to learn about it. Since it was slightly different than the original timeline. But what's the goal of him giving away information? And then I found this base HR. Okay. A transformed Goku decked Cell in the face. Forcing him to crash and break down the Cell at the end of the hallway. Goku almost forgot what he was here for. Cell was stalling. 
But he didn't know why. Cell got up with rage that manifested in the aura around him. You dare touch my face you pile of filth. The eight transformed Goku got ready to battle second form Cell in the hallway. Cell was about to jump forward, but was stopped by something and didn't go forward. Before Cell could get away and become more powerful, Goku transformed into a Super Saiyan and launched himself towards Cell. Cell was able to react in time and jumped deeper into the room. Goku's punch whiffed and was about to chase Cell down more, until he inspected the interior of the room closer. A giant metal contraption had several tubes coming out of it going into tanks that were empty. From the way Cell was smiling at him, he knew he was too late to foil whatever plans he was doing. It doesn't matter as long as he kills him. The blonde Saiyan disappeared from Cell's sight trying to catch him off guard. But like before, Cell was not trying to fight a losing battle. Solar Flare. Such a cheap move into a cheap escape. Rushing down to the other door on the opposite side of the room. The furthest he got was opening the door and taking a step out before he felt another impact on his head. The Kai blast exploded on his head, forcing him to go forward and imprint himself inside the metal wall of another hallway. The back part of Cell's head started to regenerate after getting blasted into bits. Goku in all his Super Saiyan glory, entered the pitch black hallway barely illuminating the space around him. I am not that naive enough to fall for a stupid trick like that. Although he would never know why Cell was in his second form nor know the location of the missing people yet. He would find out in time. What he would also find is strange Kai energy next to him that fled up in the darkness. Goku quickly fired in the darkness with a thing Kai blast to where the energy signal was. Something much surprising than seeing another Kai signature was missing that Kai signature with his reaction time. That type of reaction time would put FPS players to shame. The Kai signature flared once again but behind him. Goku tried to turn around and deliver a backhanded punch, but the person did it first. Flying back into the room and crashing into a stray desk, Goku's head was full of dizziness that he hadn't experienced in a long time. Yes, now that he is out let me absorb him. I don't know why you were so cautious of him when you easily overpowered him. So back on his feet after getting embarrassed over and over again started to walk over to Goku. That was until he was picked up by one hand on the neck and lifted like the bitch he was. Never question my judgment. That is not the full extent of his power. Those were the only words he could make out in those few seconds he was groggy and immediately got back up. The culprit and Cell were nowhere to be found. Seems like I know why people said they saw a female. This female voice was incredibly strong, and Cell was like a pawn. Goku was about to try to find traces of their Kai, and give chase before an explosion went off in the room that he first entered in. All of the data and evidence went in a flash. Another one right next to him blew up. He was knocked off his feet from the force of the explosion. These weren't normal gunpa. These were pockets of Kai exploding. Goku quickly needed to escape that situation, but he couldn't leave empty-handed. Looking at the biggest piece of evidence there was, he went up and uplifted the metal machine from its wires and tubing and dashed out of there. Going through the hallway where Cell and the girl presumably escaped from, he opened the latch going up and started to fly as fast as he can. The hideout was crumbling under the pressure of the earth without any support and Goku couldn't risk being buried tens of kilometers down in tons of dirt. Blasting through another fake tree above him, the hole that he just came out of filled itself with dirt. One last explosion was heard underground, with no traces of anything above in the desert. Wait, a tree in a desert? How did we not find this before? Goku brought his entire hole down to the basement of Capsule Core to get it broken down by Bulma. Bulma was already down here learning from her mom about the ins and outs of capsules and their shrinking technology. Typical first graders, am I right? Ah, daddy. Placing down the large machine, he patted Bulma on the head when she came close. Hey, Bulma, can you check this out? I found it in one of Jiro's lab underground. Sure. Bulma, come over here and help me. I will need your strength. As Bulma's daughter, Bulma was naturally gifted in intellect, so Bulma has been teaching her basically anything. Although Gohan tries his best to keep up, you can only go so far against a genius. Of course, Goku is still training them vigorously where Gohan has the one up on Bulma. Bulma walked to the machine and picked it up with ease. Flying over to an open area free from other projects, Bulma went to work. An hour later, she was able to identify what it was. This is a machine that absorbs energy from a source and 
transfers it into its raw form. Nothing really out of the ordinary except for one concept. The energy that this machine targets is the mystical energy of Kai. Someone with acute knowledge of the subject with expertise in machinery would be able to produce it. I could not even do it. Since my knowledge of Kai is limited, Goku felt like a detective trying to figure out all the puzzle pieces. It is safe to say that future Trunks won't be visiting anytime soon. The machine could be Jiro's work, that would make sense. But who is the female? Maybe I am overthinking it. Jiro might have just made Andriod 19 into a girl for his sexual pleasure or something. Three months have passed since the encounter with Cell and the mysterious person. There have been no more sightings so far. They were probably scared off, thought Goku. Goku was currently training with Cauliflower and Kale attacking him in the gravity chamber. Their limits have far been reached. The next step is only achieving Super Saiyan. Although they are geniuses of their own right, they still have a lower potential than Vegeta. From the fluctuations of Kai lately, Vegeta recently achieved his Super Saiyan form. So they aren't far off. But they aren't close either. In regards to the 8 transformation from the account of the 3 remaining Saiyans, it is nearly impossible to achieve, and they would bet they would get Super Saiyan before that. Looks like Vegeta won his bet. The only reason Goku was able to get it relatively easy was due to his already nicer nature and the Shenron wish. Ha huh, ha huh, man, you are strong. I can feel it though. I am just a step away. Cauliflower was beaming with excitement at the prospect of getting a transformation. Kale, on the other hand, didn't feel close at all. What was wrong with her? I will be going into the hyperbolic time chamber with Gohan and Bulla today. I can feel that they are both close to achieving Super Saiyan as well. I would take you with me, but it's cheating I tell you. That Hyper Watset is super lame. I don't need to extend my time just to get it. Those kids are barely turning nine and they are as strong as me. Watch, I will become a Super Saiyan before you come back out. If you say so. Goku chuckled a bit from Cauliflower's red face from yelling while exhausted. As expected of the hybrids, bypassing any conceivable notion of normalcy. The scheduled time to leave was at night time. They didn't pack much stuff, just regular training clothes. Since the chamber already has everything ready. As I said, we will spend a year in there. But out here it will only be a day. He reminded everyone and took off. The two little kids scurried to catch up to him. Dad, why do we have to train so much? Won't you protect us already? Gohan, although a genius at fighting, did not like to do it often. Of course, he was much more prone to it than the original, but he would rather not. Well, when I die, there has to be someone to do it. You teach your children in the future so that the Earth will always be safe. There was also the good chance that although Goku had so many advantages reincarnating, the hybrids would surpass him. The lookout came into view and they landed on top. They saw a surprise guest making his appearance. Uncle Piccolo, the meditating man was bombarded from hugs and fell over. The children were as strong as Piccolo, so he had a much harder time peeling them off. Piccolo came back recently from his trip from Namek learning a lot for both of us. He has mellowed out since even bringing an apprentice for me to instruct. Kami came out of his temple when he heard the commotion. By his side was a smaller Namekian, the size of the children. Chai Den said hi bringing him the attention of the other children. While they talked, Goku asked if he could use the temple. Why of course you can, right this way. Everyone went to follow Kami leaving Piccolo alone to get back to his meditation. Arriving at the brown door, Kami gave a brief rundown of the rules of the place, and the three went inside. They were met with the emptiness of nothingness that surrounded at a temple all right, kids front, line, and center. The two kids playfully stood upright next to each other. They had some standard training gear up and ready looking at their dad expectantly. We will do some light exercises. Then we will do some Kai refining that I learned in Yardrat. You kids aren't ready to push yourselves to Super Saiyan level yet. But we'll be before we leave this place. I, I so. Freaking kids. Back at Capsule Core? Cauliflower was pushing herself at 200x gravity doing routines that she made up herself. Like the kids, she took lessons from Goku and learned some proper martial arts. You need to take a rest Cauliflower. You've been at this since Kakarot has left. 
Kale was safely in the other room looking over through the panel that separated them. She was sitting whipping the sweat with a towel. After that, she stepped into the shower that was a door over and started to wipe the grime away. I promise Kakarot that I will reach it. It's like it's I'm on the tip and about to reach it. I only have a day before he comes back. They started to talk more and more while Kale was in the shower. She wasn't there for long and stepped out buck naked. Getting the clothes she hung on the outside, she was going to dress until Chichi barged into the room, making Kale jump in fright. Girls come quick. There has been news of people flying and shooting Kai from their hands onto a city. They were calling for Goku. I already contacted Tights, and she said Vegeta is on her way. They scrambled to get their clothes on while Cauliflower popped a spare Senzo to replenish her reserves. There were plenty in the bank anyway. Their moral compass has been shifting more and more as they spent time with Goku and namely the kids. Although they weren't cold-hearted like Vegeta, they weren't nice until the adorable little smiles broke their eyes. Flying towards the city, they met Vegeta on the way there. He was in a navy blue suit and some armor ready to battle, while Kale and Kualifla were wearing breathable fighting gear that Goku made. Look at you two women, domesticated and trained by that lower class. A true disgrace and corrupted by love. You are one to talk, I heard from Bomber that you and Tights had a baby. What was her name again? Eshelet. Vegeta's head got red, and he started to sputter nonsense from the embarrassment he was feeling. She is just for pleasure. I forget it. He stopped talking and left towards the city at full speed. The two girls snickered at the downfall of the prince, and raced to catch up with him. Son Goku come on out. You won't escape my hands this time. Son Goku is nowhere to be found. Shall we keep on killing humans while we wait? Affirmative Android 19. Goku will scramble to save these insects like the good little boy he is. Android 19 was ready to make a move, but he detected three large Kai signatures headed his way. Android 20 also noticed it and decided to fly up and meet them. Vegeta came in first still a little red from before, but once he saw the androids, he was back to his haughty attitude. You are what we have to worry about. This is a waste of my time. One is an old dude, and another is an albino. Ah, Vegeta, you come. You are not who we want however, Goku is the one we seek. Kakarot. Why look for that guy when you have his superior the Prince of Saiyans? The two didn't look too impressed by the way Vegeta was talking too much. Andrea 20 motioned for Andrea 19 to go and deal with him, and he happily obliged. The tin can had a full set of pearly teeth shining as he flew towards Vegeta. The battle in the air didn't last long as Andrea 19 easily had the advantage over Vegeta. All this big talk and it seemed as if Vegeta couldn't back it up. Of course, he still had his Super Saiyan. But it was embarrassing that he was losing it all. He landed an opportunity kick that did no damage. But used the time to transform into a Super Saiyan. Ha! Huh. With veins appearing around his forehead, his hair turned a golden blonde as did his aura. What is this? I don't know where you two tin cans came out of. But this is your doom now. He knew they had some metal in them from the feeling he felt when he hit them. Cauliflower and Kale arrived just in time as well. Although Vegeta didn't care that much, with his small scuffle with Andrea 19, he moved quite the distance away from the city. Jam PH, your power increased quite a lot, but we have the data of your techniques and above. This meager power boost will not be enough to overwhelm us. Well, you miscalculated. No fear. With one swing of his punch, Andrea 19's head exploded littering the ground with metal parts everywhere. Everyone stood there shocked, even Vegeta at the incredible increase in power. Hey, I am no softy like Kakarot. I you. You destroyed Andrea 19. It looks like he was ready to fight to avenge his fallen comrade. But much to the surprise of the Saiyans turned around and fled. All the battle-hardened Saiyans looked at him in disgust with his cowardly act. Vegeta held out his palm, and Kai started to gather towards it. I will end you here and now. Big Bang Attack. A large ball of blue Kai barreled its way towards Andrea 20 and started to catch up to him even at his top speed. There was a small victory bell ringing Andrea 20's mind as he turned around and also stuck out his palm. The large ball of Kai started to get sucked in by the red orb in the middle of Andrea 20's palm and disappeared from sight. All the others watched in utter shock that Vegeta's city destroyer vanished without any fight. They were released from their shock when the perpetrator started to fly away again but at faster speeds this time. Although he had a huge power gain, he still didn't have the confidence to face Vegeta, 
let alone the two other girls with unknown power boosts. Breathe in, then breathe out. I can feel your Kai circulating correctly. They were all in a meditating position in the hyperbolic time chamber. You two really impress me, only four months in. And you have reached a point where you might be able to ascend. Yang, does that mean we get to eat ice cream now? Sighing at the fact that the two strongest beings on earth are kids that put ice cream as a priority. He agreed and the two dashed off to the refrigerator and started to choose their ice cream. That didn't go far as they started to do a game of tug of war with the tub. Share and hurry it up. It is only the start of the day, so I want to get a few transforming practices in. Okay, let go Bulla. E-H-H-T-T-T she stuck out her tongue and started to spit on Gohan. That was the trigger for them to actually start fighting it out. Although they are close like twins, they couldn't help but always fight and be together. Alright, break it up. Vegeta gave Pursuit with Cauliflower and Kale a bit behind. Looks like I have to awaken those. Just as Android 20 was thinking about those heinous monster, a group of people appeared before him, and the identity of those people shook him to his core. Android 17, Android 18, Android 16, with two others cell, and feel it in your chest area. Do you feel that hidden tremendous power? Push it towards the top of your spine. Let it invigorate it within. And once you feel like it is at the limit, let it burst and become a Super Saiyan. Gah, A-H-H. The air around Bulla started to become so intense that you can see the air change in pressure. Her hair started to flow wildly defying gravity as per the norm. Her long blue locks that have been maintained even in the simple lifestyle inside of the chamber. Those long blue locks that she tried so hard to keep the same started to flash in and out of blonde. She felt her S cells accumulating on the top of her spine. There were so many that she felt like her back was about to explode from the pressure, but then she felt it. She didn't know what was the indicator. It was something within her. One last push and the S cells burst from their bubble becoming active and circulating around her body, giving her new strength. Her hair and eyes changed colors in addition to her newfound transformation. Looking over to her left, her dad and Gohan, who was already a Super Saiyan, achieving it the day before, were looking at her with satisfaction and pride respectively. Good job Bulla, both you and Gohan, have achieved Super Saiyan at the age of 8. Although getting it two years before the intended time may not seem like a long time, but it really is a testament to how much stronger they are to get it so young. Bulla went up to a mirror that resided in the chamber and started to inspect herself with blonde hair, twirling around to catch all the angles. She was quite enamored with the new look. Maybe I could ask mom if I could dye my hair permanently. No, she would kill me. Maybe highlights. Enough of that Bulla. We are going to use the last month of this year for you two to get used to your Super Saiyan forms, until you feel as if it is part of your body. But Dad, why didn't you do this? I never see you as a Super Saiyan. That's because I already did it in Yardrat. Oh, Dad, Dad, I have a question. These kids have too many questions. Go for Gohan. I always wondered why are we unlocking the Super Saiyan form first. This form is 5x times more powerful than the ape form, but we haven't unlocked it yet. Yeah, this form is better. Why should we unlock the ape form if we have this form? That's a great question actually. Transforming mainly has to do with how powerful you are, and therefore a direct relationship with S cells. Have enough of those and any Saiyan can become a Super Saiyan. The ape form however goes against the true nature of modern Saiyans. The further you are a modern Saiyan, the further you will be to achieve the ape form. As you noticed, you two already can't your Izaru and almost reach the form, while Vegeta can control it, but can barely calm himself. As to why you should strive to unlock it, it has many more uses than meets the eye. After that little lesson, they got back to training their newly acquired forms. Of course, Bulla was a little distracted thinking if she would still look cute even in her ape form. Why you? It can't be you. You are supposed to be dead. Back at the scene where Android 20 was faced off with a horde of androids, he was stuttering, as if he could not believe for a second what was before his eyes. Oh husband, show a little more compassion would you oh wait. Should I even call you that? You are just a metal doll that looks and act like him. 
I guess Android 20 would be more aptly suit. Long brown hair with large strands of it curling like a tree. There was one strand right between her eyes that she brushed away to reveal grayish blue eyes underneath her glasses. With an arrogant posture to go along with her lab coat and simple shirt, she had a wild and fiery temperament surrounding her. HMPH, enough with the love affair 21, you promised us when you released us that you would let us destroy this old fart. 18 was getting impatient and was ready to pounce at her prey. Wait a minute 18. I also want a piece of the action. 17 and 18 gave the vibe opposite of 21 even though they were both androids. Frosty auras eluded from their skin, piercing anyone who comes close. Meanwhile, 16 was looking at the scenery in the back with no emotion. All this stalling allowed the Saiyans to catch up, and they heard most of the conversation that has already taken place. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. Not always. They may just be a bigger enemy. I you still haven't told me how you are alive. You also released my other androids. And what is that green monstrosity? Oh my you don't even recognize your own creation. This is Cell. Cell in his perfect form. Preposterous. Cell is still in an egg at an underground facility. And perfect. Don't make me laugh. He needs to absorb 17 and 18 to become perfect. 17 and 18 looked at 21 for an explanation, and she did not just come up with one, but several. Did you think that I died what happened? I survived and managed to rebuild myself into an android, losing my memories as a consequence. What I do remember of you, however, is your lack of intellect compared to the top minds like briefs. Just one look at your schematics. I was able to fully redo Cell in a way that he would absorb more power than normal from living beings and when met with a certain threshold, is able to increase his form. I even made 17 and 18 stronger before releasing them from their prison. 18 and 17 seemed satisfied with that response, while Android 20 had a look of shame and unadulterated horror. Backed up against a rock and a hard place, he did the only thing he could think of. The energy that he stole from Vegeta started to swell inside of his body. He was going to go out with a bang. A big bang. That was what he thought until his head was separated from his body. The same thing happened to his torso, as his three body segments started to fall down to the ground. 17 and 18 looked at the doctor in disgust. Finished with what they wanted, they were actually quite lost. They didn't plan this far and decided to stick around to see the confrontation of the two parties. You two are who Kakarot told us about that kidnap people everywhere. Where are they and what did you do to them? Heh, those humans. They were nice food for my belly is all. So laughed feeling more and more conceited in his perfect form. I have a special ability to turn people into food. However, if they are weak enough, I could manipulate the technique to turn them into basically anything I want as long as it isn't too extreme. We hold the people captive as objects so they can continuously give us their kai. One time, a girl infiltrated a base to rescue the people that we have captive. Unfortunately, I needed a more comfortable pair of panties. So the people are still alive, Cauliflower whispered to herself. She was excited to tell Goku the good news. But she had to get out of his situation first. Vegeta was it? The Prince of Saiyans. What a measly fellow. I who have the cells of all the most powerful fighters on Earth, will be the true ruler of this universe. What was that? Vegeta being the hot head he is didn't take that insult lightly. It's not like he could let them escape anyways after such a bold claim. Using Kai on his feet for extra speed, he initiated the fight against Cell. He started with a full vertical rotation to kick Cell's neck. He landed it so he kept on going. Rotating horizontally this time, another kick lashed out to connect with Cell's cheek. A rain of punches followed to bring up dirt from the floor they were standing on. Something was strange and he knew it. But the easiness and euphoria from the simple battle made him overlook it. He soon understood why when Cell appeared unharmed when the dust settled. An impact on his left cheek came out of nowhere, and Vegeta got launched into a mountain next to a 17, and 18 were observing the match. That is the best you got I bet some Goku will be no different. After I absorb him I will absorb the rest on this planet and travel the stars. Did you say absorb Goku? Like I will let you. Let's go, Kale. Let's beat this bozo out of commission. Sure thing sis. What did they expect? That teaming together was going to make them have a chance against this booger. Vegeta was out of commission in the first interaction. Two girls who couldn't even go Super Saiyan. It was like watching a cat beat up a lion. Chem PH? This is a waste of time. 
but let's let Cell have his fun. Andriod 16, find and seek Son Goku. If you cannot kill him, lure him to me and I will finish him off. Last I know, he was headed to Kami's lookout. Andriod 16's head swiveled like an owl to look at Andriod 21. We are still planning to eliminate Son Goku. You took that programming away from my brain. So I have no desire to do so. What? Of course, we are still going to kill Son Goku. He is the leading figure that will stop a reign of power, and will ultimately destroy us if we leave him alone. But if we talk Dash, you won't disobey your mother right? Just looking at her face made a sweat drop from Andriod 16's head. He understood what he needed to do and took off towards Kami's lookout. Weak. Is this the best you got? What has Son Goku been teaching you? Maybe keeping you alive will be more fun. You both are fine pieces of meat. All their punches were missing, and others were blocked by his tail with minimal effort. With the disgusting look on his face, he looked like he enjoyed seeing the girls utter fail. However, their faces and expressions didn't look deterred. And Cell didn't like that. He liked fear. With just one kick, Cell sent massive pain waves throughout Kale's thigh, reverberating into her body. He then grabbed her arm and threw her as hard as he can into a nearby rock pillar, dislocating her arm in the process. Caulifla looked at this unfold while a slimy green tail was wrapped around her waist. Tears swelling up from her eyes, she desperately started to punch and push the tail to help out her lifelong friend. Her sister, the helplessness in her erupted, and she became more and more frantic with her movements that just added fuel to the fire. This was the expression he wanted. Oh, how glorious it is. That was the spark that lit her flame. Her hair started to change from black to blonde continuously, while her power slowly increased. She could feel it. With one last burst, Cell's tail could not withstand the peak of her kai exploding, and was severed. Standing there, breathing in and out deeply, her eyes were too focused with resentment to really stop and understand what happened. Then it dawned on her, the first female Super Saiyan. She smirked and felt infinitely more confident to beat down the person in front of her. Cell also had an interesting expression. The expression of joy and pleasure coursing through his face. The exploded tail started to regenerate itself at a rapid pace. Yes, the further you climb the further you fall. And I can't wait to push you off myself. Alright, tomorrow is the final day of the year. Remember, only one day will pass out in the real world. Finally, I get to see mom and the aunties. Spending a year with you boys have really done a number on my patience. Oh, please. Do you know how annoying it is when you try to redo your hair every time it messes up for some reason? Gohan and Buller were bickering again. How did they come out like this? Reasonable thought considering they were playing and glued to each other's hips before. What was surprising was although they did this all the time, they still are together most of the time playing around. Maybe it was just something they do. A phase maybe. One of those infamous phases. But this time before becoming teens. Maybe. Although you haven't reached perfect Super Saiyan and still have the incomplete Super Saiyan, as long as you keep working on it, you will get it in no time. For now, you can untransform, and when we get back to the house can rest. I will call the school to tell you that you will be absent Monday. Thanks, Dad. And with that, after a quick shower and dinner, they passed out like candlelights on their bunk bed. Phew, what a year. A little more boring than I thought. But at least I was able to work on transforming into Super Saiyan 2 a little bit more. I wonder what the girls are doing. I know what I'm going to do after a year of celibacy. She didn't know why she didn't see this coming. But even if she saw the visible increase in her power and the more strain it was putting on Cell, she couldn't keep the horror in her heart on how massive this abomination's power was. Lasting a longer than Vegeta, maybe it was the adrenaline of transforming but she couldn't keep up the pace that Cell was dishing out. What do you want to do after this 17? Stick with 21 with her crazy plans or go off somewhere else? I don't know, but I really do want to drive a car. What are some good brands? Maybe just steal a couple and see which one I like the best. You moron, you are basically a car with how one-tracked you are. Still sitting on the cliff watching the fight unfold below them with a complete lack of emotion. Although they sense Kai's signatures behind them, they were of such a little amount that they ignored them. 
Hey, who are you guys? Whoa, is that Vegeta laying on the ground? Krillin, Chen, and Yansha landed on the rock that the two siblings were on. Krillin gave Yansha the Senzu bean bag, and he rushed over to Vegeta to give it to him. Unfortunately, Kale was buried deep within the rock pillar for her to be noticed easily with such a bigger distraction on hand. Android 18 heard a voice behind her, and decided to turn around and see who approached them. There, she saw a bald midget who was giving orders to a taller man with short hair. Maybe it was the dominant way he talked or the submissive way the other took it. That made her take a liking to him. She slowly walked up to the man when the other left and planted a kiss on his cheek while he wasn't looking. He jumped in shock after a wet spot appeared on his cheek, and he frantically wiped it away without knowing what happened. Your cute little one. Krillin looked up and saw this sexy blonde with short hair that complimented her piercing blue eyes. He saw the rest of her body in his peripherals and did everything in his willpower not to look. I don't know who you are, lady, but I have a girlfriend. Hum, a pity. With that sentence, she didn't care enough anymore and resumed her watching of the fight like it was a sport. Ah, what just happened? I'm not quite sure myself, but you seem like quite the ladiest man. I am so dense that I didn't realize that Launch was flirting with me until she told me. I guess one of the things contributing to your success is that you should probably get something tighter so it won't be as noticeable. Vegeta woke up sweating like he had a nightmare. Not far from the truth to be out for the count on just one swing was an embarrassment for the prince. His eyes locked on with Cell and how he was fighting Caulifla. He became even madder that a woman had reached Super Saiyan and was lasting longer than him. Such a thing never has happened to him, at least from his account. No matter how much he wanted to hop on and also swing at Cell, his pride wouldn't allow double teaming on an opponent, no matter how much he hated him. Caulifla however threw away most of her pride long ago when she couldn't move, and was having the time of her life. Vegeta, you are awake. Come and help me here. I would never fight alongside you. Have you forgotten your say in pride? You do know that I know tights and everything about your relationship, right? Let me call her after this and see how much she likes your pride. To be a successful woman, you need to know how to control pieces to get what you want. Such a fragile man, ego-wise, didn't want to feel the wrath of another female. Especially one that had his baby in her stomach. Joining in on the fight, Andrea 21 was getting quite bored at this point and yawned at the fight that lasted way too long. You Saiyans are getting up like flies. It was those Senzu beans, was it? Cell stop playing around, they can't use them and keep this fight going if they are dead. Get ordered around like the dog you are Cell, all powerful. Are you powerful enough to bite the leash that is around your neck? You aren't. Vegeta spoke his trash talk as usual. Cell agreed that this has gone on for too long. Vegeta and Caulifla tagged the team well, considering they were in the same squad before, but Cell was just too powerful. Taking out the annoying one first, Get hammered down his fist straight through Vegeta's hair and shook his brain. That impact instantly made him dizzy until he passed out on the ground. Caulifla got a punch right on the gut, making her pupils disappear, turning her eyes completely white. Can't ruin that pretty face. I want to have fun with you so bad, but I will kill some Goku first. Android 16 is too soft and weak to do it. But the real reason is that I want to see your despair as you watch. Ha ha ha. Mission complete, one to go. Ominous Kai was behind him growing in power. It was huge only going up rapidly. There was something about it, wild and uncontrollable. That spot where it is coming from was where the rock pillar Kale was embedded. Cell could see one eye wanting to kill him coming from the rock through a little hole. Boom inside the rock pillar. There was a sound of an explosion going off. Boom cracks spread everywhere with dirt scattering about. Everyone, even the androids, stood up in anticipation. Boom another hit the cast like a shockwave. The area was silent afterward. No sound, no movement, even the wind was too scared to awaken the beast. Well, it was too late. The beast has arrived. A muscular arm shot out from the rock pillar as if it was seeking air. On its hand, it crushed the rocks that were in its way and scattered them about in the air. After that, the rock pillar couldn't contain the monster anymore and broke into pieces, revealing what was underneath. Doubled in size, Kale had the muscles of a Greek god. Chiseled from head to toe, her pupils were yellow and was sporadically looking around the environment. When she spotted the down cauliflower, bruises, cuts and dirt coating her skin, 
The look of rage was comparable to a wild bull. Her hair was black as usual. However, the green aura accenting it made it fly up in rage. Her eyes locked onto Cell and didn't waste any time where she could be kicking his ass. Leaving a crater at her mark, the rest of the rocks from the previous pillar decimated and turned to dust. Let's get started then. She was just another cockroach from the nest of Saiyans, even though her power was destructive in nature. So naturally didn't feel worried. Upon arrival, the fist that was going to punch him in the gut was easily dodged with Cell's incredible movement. Huh. Not so bad, just as much strength as the one before. There was no coordination from her attacks, as she just tried to punch Cell in that disgusting face. When he smoked along with his dodges, that made Kel even angrier, and her power increased directly influencing her speed. W what? I need to end this quick. So with that thought, he packed his full punch and smacked Kel right in the cheekbone. He only used about 60% of his power to knock out Cauliflower. So surely this muscle freak couldn't withstand his full power. What he feeling was a victory, it was resistance. Kel slowly and forcibly moved her head back to look at the bug who dared punched her. Not thinking about any technique or tactics, she just blindly punched back. So barely dodged in the direction of where his fist was and stumbled upon his steps. Luckily, Kel couldn't capitalize on it because she used her full power and more on that punch. When that punch hit the ground due to overexertion, it buried itself and the ground started to crack vertically. The earth shook and everyone has only felt the calm before the storm. Whoosh! The door of the hyperbolic time chamber opened revealing two little Silhawatos of children. Gohan and Bulla ran outside ready to tackle whoever was on the other side. But strangely, no one was there to greet their arrival. Where is everybody? Goku came right after them and also noticed something strange. What he noticed wasn't that there wasn't anyone to greet them but there were no distinguishable Kai signatures on the hideout. So, he expanded his senses to see where they had gone and discovered that there were three signatures, but they were very weak. Feeling strange, he expanded it any more and caught something that alerted him. Destruction like Kai, unique to only one. What is happening? He decided he needed to get there as fast as he can and understand what was happening. His best wishes were that Kale was trying to control it for practice. But considering the massive amount of Kai being thrown around, he wouldn't bet on it. Kids, do you feel that? I need to go right now. Go and find the Namekians and see what they know. Just as he was about to go and defuse the situation, another bomb just had to show up. Literally of course. You need not go anywhere. Son Goku, I am here to eliminate you. Walking into the hallway was a tall man with black tights and green armor. Where the heart is supposed to be. The color shading of that green was lighter than the rest indicating a cover of something. Andriad, as expected of you, very perceptive. Yes, I go by Andriad 16, and by my orders, I will destroy you. Wait, is that Uncle Piccolo Goku didn't notice Andriad 16 was dragging Piccolo by the cape this entire time? His side profile was all he saw while Gohan and Bulla were flying around so they had a better angle. Now that he looked closer, Andriad 16 had burnt marks and dust on his outfit, showing all the damage Piccolo had done. I, I don't have time for this. Something way more important is happening right now. Surely you feel it, the potential end to this universe. Such a grandiose statement invoked no emotion from the robot as he just stared at him. Aggravated from the situation, Goku put his fingers on his forehead to teleport away grabbing the children as well. Such tricks wouldn't go unnoticed by 16 as his eyes widened, and a fist was flying towards Goku. He had to release the technique before locking into any Kai to block the attack, but Gohan jerked his hand away from Goku's grip, turned Super Saiyan, and deflected the fist. Gohan. The fist went haywire before it went back to 16's arm. 16 released Piccolo and started to get into a position to fight Goku. Bulla understood what to do and turned Super Saiyan as well flying beside her brother. Dad, let Gohan and I take care of this tin can while you take care of whatever you need to do. He needs to pay for what he did to Uncle Piccolo anyways. So let me smash his face. The two Saiyans then, in a swirl pattern, flew towards the Andrea together with the usual Saiyan excitement in their eyes. The hit only made her angrier, and the angrier she got, the more powerful she was. Before, Cell managed to dodge and occasionally attack safely. But now, his best option was trading blows with his opponent. 
and negative trades they were when most of the time, just one fist coated with Kai, would blow his arm away. Kamehameha. This was the first time anyone besides Goku witnessed a copy of one of their techniques, and they were shook at the potential. Kel, however, in her wrath state, didn't even blink at the Kai blast, and put up her hand to defend. Coated with Kai, the Kamehameha was being deflected by the hand, and she slowly walked up to him. Power resonated with every step, and it just kept increasing as the fight went on. I will become the strongest in the universe. How could this preposterous monkey beat me? 21 help me. You need me. 21. Cell unconsciously called her 21 instead of master, and she didn't miss it. But he was right. She did need him. However, everyone, including the androids, was confused. Yes, she was an android from the account of others' mouths. But how strong can she be? If Cell is struggling, then even if she had decent firepower, it wouldn't make a dent on the ever-increasing Rothal Saiyan. A pink aura started to form around her. The first sign of her with any battle knowledge despite being a scientist. It circled around her and soon, there was a mix of purple as well. Slowly, her skin started to turn pink, and her long brown hair started to sway white. Her eyes became corrupted with black, and her eyes turned a blood shade of red. Transformation complete, she took off her glasses in a brisk fashion, and stored them in her case. Along with her lab coat and shirt, she stored them all in a capsule and pocketed it. All she was left with was a black bra that was super tight to hold the puppies and her tights that she normally wore. Hum, I love transforming. This form makes me feel so free. She licked her lips, quite sultry-like and looked at Kale, as if he was looking at a toy. In fact, her nether regions were already getting soaked from the thought of playing with this girl. You look so tasty. I can't wait to play with you. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much. And it keeps me going. Plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.